That's what I thought. Okay, looks like we've got everybody. Uh, and we are now on the live stream for uh, all of our uh, family members, uh, friends and, and coaches. So uh, let's move forward. Um, like I said, we're, gosh, we're a couple of minutes late, but in the grand scope of things, we're on time uh, based on how late, we've, late I've been in the past. So uh, glad to see that. Um, before we uh, move forward and call, and I call the case, uh, I'd like to introduce myself. I have had both of you teams together here, uh, although we have not had the same scoring panelists ne necessarily, but just to remind you, uh, I am a retired district court judge in this district, the 18th, uh, having sat in Arapahoe for 14 plus years. Before that, for 26 years, I was a uh, civil trial attorney. Uh, this is, is not just the type of case, but the type of subject matter that I dealt with for 26 years. So I am pretty familiar with these uh, product type cases. Um, and uh, Ms. Van Dusen, if you could introduce yourself to our uh, competitors. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Sarah Van Dusen. I am an attorney at a law firm here in Denver called Wheeler Trigg O'Donnell, and I specialize in legal ethics. And by the way, that Wheeler is no relation to me. Correct. <laughs> all, of, all of the, most of the attorneys there I know and am good friends with, as I am with most law firms, but no relation there. And Mr. Pereira. Thank you, Judge. Um, my name's Anthony Pereira. I am an attorney with Metro Volunteer Lawyers, um, doing mostly family law, which is divorce and custody kinds of cases. Thank you. And I'd like everybody on video, including uh, Timekeeper A, and we'll keep our uh, panelists on video until I swear them in and then they can drop off. Um, otherwise, um, I'm going to be very brief in my comments here. You've already heard them three times, uh, these rules and things, so I'll be brief with them, but I do need to get some of them on record. Um, please remember that um, um, bench conferences are not allowed, no one in my, 15 years of doing these competitions on any team has asked for a bench conference, so no problem there. Um, recesses will not be granted unless there is a technical problem or a health emergency. We've had a lot of technical problems. And uh, in fact, in the very last trial we did here in round uh, three, I had to, I gave both teams an additional two minutes at, uh, for the last witnesses as they were winding up, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, so I did not time everybody out because uh, we just had at least two minutes worth of glitches during the trial. So I gave everybody at the end an additional two minutes to finish up. So don't worry about that. If we have some glitches, uh, I will take care of that at the end. Uh, if there is a health emergency, notify me, let me know having been a lawyer who, uh, when I had the flu standing up in a Jeff, uh, Jefferson County court, and after lunch, giving my opening statement, I passed out cold on the floor because I forgot to eat anything and uh, I was dehydrated. So if there is a health emergency, let me know. Um, Give me just a minute here. I, I, I didn't page back here. Um, video recording of this, uh, this is the fourth round. So um, there's no more competition here. We're at the end of the competition. The rules say that uh, unless the CBA gives you permission to record or take photographs of those of you who are doing on the live feed, uh, you're not supposed to do that, but quite honestly, the competition's over after this round, so there's no more competition to uh, uh, be concerned about. So I'm not concerned if you record or uh, take photos, quite frankly. Uh, also, if you are, again, if you're not connected with one of these teams, you're not supposed to be viewing it for competition reasons. Uh, but again, competition's over, so I don't think that really matters, um, frankly. Um, Time requirements will be adhered to. As I said, I will adjust time 
before we get to the end, I usually do it oh, within five or 10 minutes of the end of examination so that you know you've got a couple extra minutes if, we, uh, if I decide to do that. I may not, but who knows? If we have a lot of glitches, I may very well decide to do that. But I won't tell you at the last minute, the last second that you've got more time. I will give you some notice ahead of time that you've got a little more time. Otherwise, timekeeping will be according to the timekeepers and strictly enforced. If there is a question in progress that is pretty much entirely asked, but you run out of time, I'll let you finish that question without any deduction. And of course the answer then will come in, but then you're done once the time has run like that. But I will let you finish a question that you have started before time runs out without any um, uh, do, you know, docking by the scoring panelists. Um, I'm going to, uh, oh, I, I forgot to ask and I should have, um, Lead counsel for the uh, plaintiff team B is who? Um, that would be me, Caroline Flores, Your Honor. Ms. Flores, you are lead counsel again. And for the uh, defendant uh, team A, um, who is lead counsel? Uh, I am Trinity Doyle. Ms. Doyle, here you are right there. OK, thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to ask Ms. Flores if you would introduce yourself, your uh, ask your co-counsel to do so, and your witnesses, please. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Are you saying we introduce ourselves now? Yes, introduce yourself and then pass it along to your co-counsel and your witnesses. Right, thank you. Um, good afternoon, Your Honor, opposing counsel, members of the jury. My name is Caroline Flores. I am an attorney. I will be conducting the direct of Dakota Weirs and the crossing of Lake Doncourt. I, I will as well be doing the opening statement. Good afternoon, Your Honor, opposing counsel and the jury. My name is Zane Maestas, and today I'll be conducting the closing, doing the direct on Carson Durst and crossing Skylar Weirs. My co-counsel now introduce himself. Thank you. Good afternoon, Your Honor, jury and opposing counsel. My name is Haven Wilson. I'm an attorney and I will be conducting the cross-examination for De Dr. Devin Williams and directly examining Dr. Casey Rogers. Your Honor, may our witnesses introduce themselves? Yes, they may. Good afternoon, Your Honor, members of the jury and opposing counsel. My name is Chloe Hills and I am Dakota Weas. Good afternoon, Your Honor, opposing counsel, members of the jury. My name is Emma Ryan and today I am Carson Durst. Thank you. Good afternoon, Your Honor, opposing counsel and members of the jury. My name is Jenna Kim and I am Dr. Casey Rogers. Thank you. And Ms. Doyle, if you would introduce yourself as lead defense counsel and then pass it along to your co-counsel and witnesses. Good afternoon, Your Honor, members of the jury and opposing counsel. My name is Trinity Doyle. I will be directing Dr. Devin Williams and crossing Dr. Casey Rogers and presenting the closing statement. And I, along with my co-counsel, represent the defense. Permission for my co-counsel to introduce themselves? Yes. Falling off, falling off. Uh, good day, Your Honor, members of the jury and opposing counsel. My name is Liv Lane. I'll be crossing Carson Durst as well as Dakota Weirs, and I will be directing Skylar Weirs and Blake Doncourt, as well as presenting the opening statement. Thank you. And your witnesses? My name is Janelle Moore, and I am Blake Doncourt. My name is Leah Loera, and I am Skylar Ware. My name is Mo Chisholm, and I am Dr. Devin Williams. Thank you. Um, give me just a moment here. Okay, and um, I'm assuming um, Heather, that we are not, we do not have another uh, scoring panelist. Is that correct?
see if Heather is there. Well, I'm going to assume that we don't. Uh, all that means is that I am also a scorer. And because I just uh, essentially am aware of that now, give me just a moment to, okay. Uh, so that'll just mean that I am both uh, presiding over the trial and I will be a scoring panelist. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to swear uh, folks in now. Uh, first, I'm going to swear all the attorneys. Uh, you may assent to this oath uh, by nodding your head, but I'm going to ask all the attorneys to, whether they're on camera or not, to raise your hands, right hand, and uh, uh, I'll give you this oath. Uh, attorneys, do you promise that the presentation you're about to give will faithfully and truthfully conform to the facts and rules of the mock trial competition? And nod if you agree, I see lots of nodding. I'm going to ask the witnesses to do the same. Please raise your right hands. Uh, witnesses, do you promise that the testimony you're about to give will faithfully and truthfully conform to your witness statements, that you will not add material facts or opinions which are not contained in the case problem, and that you will follow the rules and procedures of the mock trial competition? Thank you. Uh, finally, uh, uh, scoring panelists, if you would each raise your hands, and I am raising mine as well. Um, do you promise to adjudicate the mock trial competition as fairly and objectively as possible in accordance with the facts, procedures, and rules of the mock trial competition? And I do as well. Uh, now, as I did, I think uh, both teams are familiar. I am going to swear all the witnesses in right now for testimony. That way we don't have to waste time during the trial for, uh, uh, to be called to the stand and sworn in individually. So all the witnesses, if you would again, raise your right hands. Uh, do you solemnly swear or affirm under penalty of law that the testimony you're about to provide today in this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Great. Okay, and our scoring panelists have uh, both uh, muted and uh, gone off video. We'll see them at the end of the trial. Um, we're now calling the case. And, um, oh, let me get my, here we go. Um, Ms. Flores, anything uh, that you have uh, for the court before we start? Yes, Your Honor. We first um, request that the stipulated facts be admitted into evidence. And they are so admitted, and uh, we assume that the jury has those. Second, we ask that witnesses be considered constructively sequestered. Uh, witnesses are sequestered. Uh, thank you. And finally, we ask that admitted um, exhibits constructively remain on the witness stand for ease of reference. Yes. Uh, do you intend for your exhibits for the plaintiff to be um, uh, screen shared? Yes, there will be, um, the timekeepers will screen share the exhibits. Timekeepers will uh, screen share, okay. Uh, anything else? And they, they will be posted uh, for identification, although everybody can see it, the jury can see it. I have instructed them, they are not to consider those exhibits until I admit them. So anything else? No, Your Honor. Okay, and Ms. Doyle, uh, anything from the defense? Uh, just one, we request uh, that, we, um, to, sorry, we request to reserve any time not used in our closing argument today for rebuttal. Of course, and the way I work that, as you uh, both teams probably know, is if uh, on the uh, rebuttal, um, let's see, well, you'll be, uh, for team A, you'll be the defense, so you're not gonna get a rebuttal on your closing argument anyway, um, because you're the defendant, you go second. Uh, you just give your closing and then the plaintiff may ask for a rebuttal, but the concept is for the plaintiff in closing, if you ask for a specific amount like two minutes for rebuttal, the timekeeper will notify you at two minutes saying two minutes, and then you can stop talking or you can continue if you wish, or if you say nothing in advance uh, that any automatically any time left out of your uh, closing argument 
is reserved for a rebuttal automatically without you asking for it. You don't use up your time, you can use it for rebuttal automatically. You don't need to ask for rebuttal. But if you do ask for it, you'll be notified by the timekeeper of that period of time. Um, on the defense side, uh, Ms. Doyle, uh, how are you going to uh, view exhibits? Are you going to uh, post them by screen sharing or otherwise? Our timekeepers will be screen sharing. Timekeepers will be screen sharing for both teams then, great. Okay, um, otherwise, let me see here. I think we've run through everything. Um, is uh, uh, Ms. Flores, uh, are you ready for trial? Yes, Your Honor, the plaintiff is ready. And uh, Ms. Uh, Doyle, is the defendant ready for trial? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, Ms. Flores, uh, I believe it is your opening statement. May it please the court, Your Honor, opposing counsel, members of the jury, this is a case about corporations behaving badly. Nothing good ever comes out of hurry and frustration, only misery. Actions always have consequences. Lush fertilizer was rushed. If Lush followed its own science, we wouldn't be here today. Good afternoon. My name is Caroline Flores, and along with my co-counsel, Haven Wilson and Zane Maestas, we represent the plaintiff, Dakota Weirs. Ms. Weirs is here today to fight for what, for what Lush Fertilizer chose to do. Lush decided to bring a toxin to the market, which was according to Mr. Blaine Dog Corp, had little to no risk. And yet this little to no risk completely ruined the life of a prominent young woman, a woman who could have been your cousin, your sister, or even your own daughter. It is our job to prove to you by a preponderance of the evidence that there there was a lack of care by Lush in marketing the product and that Lush was negligent by making a rash decision by bringing this product to the market. You will first hear from Ms. Dakota Weirs. This is a prominent young woman who had everything going for her. She was set, up, she was set to go to the Juilliard School. Ms. Dakota Weirs' piano skills were excellent. That was her whole life. That has been robbed from her. Her career was cut off early. Unfortunately, Ms. Dakota Weirs developed non-Hodgkin lymphoma after her encounter with flush fertilizer. This is no coincidence. Non-Hodgkin lymphoma is not genetically passed from family. This is an environmental factor because Ms. Dakota Weirs came in contact with Drufo. It is clear that flush fertilizer puts profit over people, meaning that they are also putting lives on the line. Next, Carson Durst is a former researcher and an employee and former employee at Lush Fertilizer. He will tell you how Lush tested Juvo and found potential carcinogens, um, qualities that go way back in 2003. Carson Durst will describe how Lush Fertilizer kept a threatening product in the market. Lush knew its product was dangerous. Finally, we'll have Dr. Casey Rogers who will tell you about their study on Drufo and discover that people who were regularly exposed to Drufo were 10 times more likely to be diagnosed with cancer than those who were never exposed to Drufo. We expect flush fertilizer will call three witnesses as well. Blake Doncourt is one of them. The evidence will show that Blake Doncourt is simply only concerned with how much money he could save. Let's keep this in mind. There was an opportunity to reduce any risk but at all, but still, according to Blake Doncourt, it was simply too expensive. Dakota Weirs has a twin sister, Skylar Weirs. Now, Skylar Weirs claims to be an expert in modern agritech. Please keep in mind that Skylar Weirs did not attend college and never worked for an agritech company. Skylar Weirs is an example of an unaccomplished individual who is here today to testify against their own sister. What does it say about this individual? Please know that she is here to not support the twin sister. She is here today to show us her educated state of mind and testify against her own sister. Dr. Devin Williams will try to testify today that Drufo is safe and that the scientific data is not accurate. Dr. Williams will tell you today that he has never authored any publications regarding Drufo, even though Dr. Williams has worked for Lush for over 10 years. We are confident that after hearing our case, you will return a verdict in favor of Dakota Weirs, who will ask you to compensate Dakota of her loss of her enjoyment in life, her past, current, and future pain and suffering. 
and for the reduced lifespan that she will experience. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you. And Ms. Lane, uh, opening statement for the defendant. Yes, Your Honor. Your Honor, honorable members of the jury and of the opposing counsel, I am Liv Lane and this is my team. We represent Lush Fertilizer. We're here today due to the accusations placed on Lush Fertilizer by Dakota Weirs. Dakota Weirs' claims against the defense include the defendant being negligent in the making of Drufo, producing the product without exercising reasonable care, and not considering the plaintiff to be one of the product's consumers. I ask that you find Lush not guilty of these charges. These claims are false because, as we all know, rumors don't cause tumors. Dakota's main suspicion of the product began with her discovery of a mere television news story. Who here has ever seen a story on the news that does not tell the whole truth? A story that has misled you. Fake news is everywhere now with the ideas given to her by this one story alone. Dakota began her research on Lush Fertilizer. Dakota and her team will likely present evidence today that has been gathered to make Lush Fertilizer look criminal. These claims will likely include the fact that Lush's product is dangerous. We're here to say that Lush, like any publicly sold chemical compound, has chemicals and chemical bonds. These chemical bonds could potentially be dangerous. However, Lush's team of scientists have done their absolute best to ensure their product is one of the cleanest and safest products on the market today. Many witnesses will be put on the stand today to both affirm and deny these claims. Today, you will hear from Skylar Weirs, who will prove the previously made point. Skylar Weirs is a reliable journalist and has done hours upon hours of research and writing on topics including GMO, agritech, and other related matters. She will also explain to you her relationship with her sister and express how Dakota's illness has changed both their lives. She will, you will also hear from Blake Doncourt, honorable and proud CEO of Lush Fertilizer. He will be talking about the hard work he's done to get this company off its feet and make, the, and make this company one of the most safe, reliable, and trustworthy companies. Another witness will be the expert, Dr. Devin Williams. Dr. Williams is very well versed in the chemicals included in this product, having a PhD in pharmatoxicology. They have taken many measures to ensure the safety of using this product. Today, the plaintiff has the burden of proof. You will also hear from the plaintiff's witnesses claiming they know things about lush fertilizer and how it affects the human bodies. They will be making these claims with no past experience or knowledge in this subject. Be sure to keep in mind, these people may claim to be experts, but you should consider the limit to their expertise yourself. People like Carson Durst, Casey Rogers, and Dakota Weirs will testify that they are very knowledgeable in the dangers of Drufo. Be sure to consider the limit of their expertise. Be sure to remember that rumors don't cause tumors. I ask that you find Lush not liable for negligent negligence due to the fact facts that have just been presented to you. I also ask that you be diligent in deciphering the difference between facts and rumors, that you take the evidence into account and decipher its legitimacy as well. We trust you to make the right decision. Thank you. Thank you. And um, uh, Ms. Flores, uh, I believe uh, is our first witness, uh, Dakota Weirs. Yes, at this time we would like to call Dakota Weirs to the stand. All right, and uh, Ms. Flores, you are going to be doing direct exam, is that correct? That's correct. And Ms. Lane, you will be doing uh, cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, give me just a moment to, because uh, I have to score as well here, so give me just a moment. And... Okay, and uh, uh, Ms. Flores, please call your witness to the stand. Yes, Ron, at this time we would like to call Dakota Weirs to the stand. And uh, Ms. Weirs, you have already been sworn. Ms. Flores, you may continue. Thank you, Your Honor. Dakota, um, could you please, I'm sorry, my bad. Oh, good afternoon, my name is Caroline Flores. Um, could you please state your full name and spell your last name for the record? 
Dakota Weirs, W-E-I-R-S. Ms. Weirs, why are you here? I'm here because I'm suing Lush Fertilizer for their negligence in labeling their product and the hazards. How old are you? I'm 20 years old. Have you ever had a job? Yes. Who have you worked for? I worked for Haven Landscaping. For how long? For several years. What did you like about working there? I liked working outdoors and with my hands. Do you still work there? Due to my physical condition, I'm not able to anymore. Did you ever work with chemicals? Yes, I did. Were you aware of the ingredients listed in the Lush Fertilizer? At the time, I was not, but now I am. Would you recognize the label of Lush Fertilizer? Yes, I would. Uh, Your Honor, I am now going to show opposing counsel has been marked as Exhibit 1 for identification. Permission to show the exhibit to the witness. Yes, you may. Right. Um, Dakota, can you tell us, oh, can you tell us what this is? Um, Yes, this is the labeling of the Lush fertilizer. How did you come to see this? Um, As soon as I saw the news story, I called my former boss and asked for a picture of the labeling. Is this accurate? Yes, it is. Is it complete? Yes. Your Honor, we move to enter Exhibit 1 into evidence. Its authenticity has been stipulated and its accuracy has been shown. And Ms. Lane, uh, as to Exhibit 1, any objection? No, Your Honor. Exhibit 1 is admitted. Uh, Jury may see it. You may proceed, Ms. Flores. Thank you. Uh, Dakota, I'd like to invite your attention to one of the hazards um, contained on that. What type did the product come in? Spray fertilizer. Did you ever have any eye irritation as a result of using this product? No, only um, fatigue my and like enlarged lymph nodes and um, chest pains because of my um, lymphoma. So um, please look at the section where it says use your safety recommendations. Do you see that on the warning? Yes, I do. Would you please read the, uh, the paragraph following user safety recommendations? As with any spray fertilizer, utilize protective clothing that covers exposed skin. Use of a respirator or N95 face mask is recommended. Follow manufacturer's instructions for cleaning slash maintaining personal protective equipment. So you weren't told to wear protective clothing when you were using the pellets, right? No, I was not. Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. Um, well, uh, because there was no statement, if she had said there was a statement, it might be hearsay, but because there was no statement, there's no hearsay. So it's a potential objection that was avoided by the answer. So, uh, uh, overruled, let's move on. So you weren't, I'm sorry, did I ask the question? Do you want me to repeat the question? Uh, I think Um, she, I believe she answered, but maybe not. I I did it. Ask it if you wish. All right. Um, So you weren't told to wear protective clothing when you were using the pellets, right? No, I was not. So you've mentioned before that you have had symptoms by non-Hodgkin lymphoma. How do these symptoms affect your daily life? Well, because of my physical condition, I'm not able to do any of my daily activities anymore. Were you an active member of your community? Yes, I I like to volunteer at homeless shelters because I like to help out with the disadvantaged. And how was school? School was really well for me. Um, I was a part of the National Honor Society and I was elected to be student body president. Did you have any plans for after high school? Yeah, I actually got a full ride scholarship to Juilliard for my piano skills. Could you tell me more about the Juilliard school? Well, I've been playing piano since I was very little, but I really got into it when I was seven because my grandfather passed away and that was the only way I could feel close to him again. 
All right, well, let's move on. Do you know what Drufo is? Yes, I do. Why do you believe Drufo is the cause of your illness? Um, I have a twin sister, Skyla Wias, and we grew up doing the same things and um, participating in the same activities and the same environment. Um, and the only exception is that Skyla never walked at Haven Landscaping with me, and so she was never exposed to Drufo, and so therefore not affected the way I was. Have you received any medical treatment? Yes, I have. Can you give us an idea on what the medical bills are? Um, quite a lot for cancer. Um, it's quite difficult to manage. And how have you been handling them? Um, fortunately, my father has been paying for them. So what did you do right away after learning the news concerning Lush Fertilizer? Um, as soon as I found out, I called my former boss and I wanted to warn them about Drufo and the effects of it. Do you believe Lush Fertilizer failed to adequately warn its users of the dangers of the product? Yes, the only caution was for eye irritation. Um, objection, Your Honor, improper opinion. The counsel is asking the witness to give an opinion. Uh, and Ms. Flores? Um, Your Honor, under Rule 701, a lay witness may present an opinion based on her rational perception when it is helpful to understand the witness's testimony or determine a fact and issue. And it's, yeah. Ms. Lane? The um, witness doesn't have the proper knowledge to give this opinion. Uh, I'll overrule the objection. I believe she has testified that she uh, had looked at the label and she was aware of uh, what warnings or recommendations were given by her employer, not by Lush, but by her employer. So I think she's laid a foundation for that lay opinion under uh, 701. So I'll allow it. Uh, overruled, Ms. Flores, you may continue. Thank you, Your Honor. Dakota, were you told to wear protective clothing by Haven Landscaping? Yes, I was. And did you? No, because the only caution was eye irritation. And also they didn't provide any and no, none of the other walkers did. Do you know if Lush Fertilizer produces a product in a different country? Yes, I believe they produce a product in um, France, a lot of European countries, Canada, and I believe some African countries um, without Drufo in it. What have you learned? I've learned that in those countries, Drufo has been outlawed. What, if anything, do you hope to accomplish with this lawsuit? Honestly, I just hope that no one else has to go through what I have to because of um, Lush's negligence. No further questions, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Lane, cross-exam. Yes, Your Honor. Hello, Dakota. I'd like to start by saying my entire team sends you our well wishes for a swift recovery. Thank you. Did at one point in your life you use Lush Fertilizer's product? Yes, I did. And you started using this product at the age of 14, correct? Correct. And you stopped using it three or four years later, right? Yes, I believe so. This setting you at the age of around 17 or 18, is that correct? Yes. So you were a legal child up until your last few months of employment? Yes. Are you aware of the warning label on this product? Yes, I am. Your Honor, um, Permission to screen share what has previously been marked as Exhibit 1? Yes, you may. <clears throat> I believe our timekeeper will be taking care of that for us. I'm so sorry, I'm sorry. but my computer is not allowing me to screen share. We can screen share up, for you. We, uh, Ms. Uh, Flores, could we have uh, Team B uh, timekeeper put that back up? Yes, Your Honor, they will do that. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yes, thank you. Um, I'm so sorry. Ms. Sears, uh, could you please clearly state to the court what is being shown? Yes, this is the Lush Fertilizer Packaging. 
Thank you. If you could please read silently along with me as I read aloud the section um, labeled user safety recommendations. As with any spray fertilizer, utilize protective clothing that covers exposed skin. Use of a respirator or N95 mask is recommended. Follow manufacturer's instructions for cleaning slash maintaining personal protective equipment, PPE. Did I read that correctly? Yes, you did. So you were told to wear by this label uh, protective gear, correct? Well, again, as I established, I'm not concerned about eye irritation particularly. Were you also told to wear certain clothing by your boss, such as long sleeves? Yes, but they never provided and it was never enforced. What about pants? Same thing. Gloves? Yeah, no. Face coverings? Not provided either. So you were told to wear all these garments? Yes, I was. Did you wear these suggested garments? No, because there were no repercussions if I didn't. Did you know at the time that not doing so could lead to future problems? No, because again, the only caution was eye irritation. If you had known there would be future problems past eye irritation, would you have changed your clothing into what was suggested? Yes, I would have. So you're telling me that you're only willing to do the correct thing when you stand to lose something like proper health, for example, is that correct? I mean, yes, that's a pretty high risk. Thank you. Have you seen a doctor about your cancer? Yes, I have. Does your doctor have hope in your recovery? Um, this is outside of my witness statement. Do you want me to respond? Actually, I'd like to direct your attention to... Um... Let's, uh, let's drop exhibit one if we could. Thank you. Thank you very much for putting that up for the plaintiff uh, on the plaintiff's side. Ms. Lane, you may continue. Thank you. Um, if you'll just give me one moment, please. Uh, uh, permission to uh, confer with my co-counsel, please. Yes, you may. Thank you, Your Honor. You previously gave a statement in this case? Yes. And that statement was under oath? Yes. And you understood the importance of telling the truth in that statement, correct? Yes. Um, I'm sorry, my cold counsel is having a little bit of difficulty. Okay, I'll move on. Um, I'm sorry, one minute to uh, confer with my co-counsel, please. You can come back to that issue if you wish. Okay. Um, Ms. Weirs, do you have hope in your recovery? Personally, um, I feel conflicted about it. Are you hoping you go to college? I mean, I don't see why I would if I don't live through it. What college were you hoping to attend if you were able to live through it, Ms. Weirs? Juilliard. And you were offered a scholarship to this college? Yes, I was. Did you accept this scholarship? Um, I believe I was 17 when I got the scholarship. I'm sorry, my question was, did you accept the scholarship? Um, I'm not sure if that's, I don't think so, no. Uh, 
Okay, I'll continue. I'd like to take us back a few steps and ask you again, does your doctor have hope in your recovery? My doctor told me I have a 75% survival rate for the next five years. Um, objection, Your Honor, the witness is non-responsive. Uh, well, if she has, um, if you wish to challenge that, you may impeach her with it, with something else, but uh, uh, it's not an objection, it's just impeachment if you wish to go that route. Yes, I do wish to impeach the witness. And do you have a document you can, or a statement you can impeach her with? Yes. Let's move forward in that process then. Um, in lines 52 through 53 of the witness's statement, she says, I fear I will hang never- on, Hang on, hang on just a moment. Uh, uh, Ms. Weirs, do you have a copy of your statement? Um, I do not. Um, in the absence of that copy, I will let you read it, Ms. Lane, rather than having her read it. We'll assume it's sworn and that it, that it is uh, a part of the case. You may go ahead and read it. Okay. The statement is, I fear I will never be well enough to pursue a career in concert piano, even though my doctor has not given up hope. Did I read that correctly to anyone's knowledge? Yes. Thank you, Your Honor. No further questions. <coughs> Objection, Your Honor. I don't see how that's impeachable. Uh, I found it uh, contrary to what uh, the witness said about the doctor uh, only saying she had a 75% chance of uh, survival as opposed to that the doctor has not given up hope. I think that's sufficiently different to uh, uh, take the issue to the jury. Uh, Ms. Flores, do you have any redirect? I believe Ms. Lane, you did rest your cross. Yes, Your Honor, thank you. Ms. Flores, uh, redirect. No, Your Honor. Uh, without redirect, of course, there is no recross. Uh, uh, Ms. Weirs, uh, your testimony is completed. Thank you very much. You're excused. Thank you, Your Honor. And our next witness, um, I believe, is Ms. Um, Ms. Uh, or uh, Carson Durst, correct? Correct, Your Honor. Permission to change my name. And uh, let's see here, we've got uh, Mr. Maestas, are you uh, conducting that uh, direct exam? That is correct. And hold on here, I've got to do my witness thing here. Uh, let's see. Durst, Durst. Oh, second page, that's why. Uh, uh, Ms. Lane, you are also uh, crossing Mr. Um, or Carson Durst, is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Durst, I apologize. Give me just a moment then. Okay, uh, Mr. Macis, you may call your witness to the stand. Hello, my name is Zane Maestas. Please say your name and spell your last name for the record. My name is Carson Durst, D-U-R-S-T. And Ms. Uh, Ms. Durst, you have been sworn. Mr. Macis, you may continue. Thank you, Your Honor. Did you ever go to college? I did. Where did you go to college? I went to Arizona State University. Did you get any degrees while you were there? I did. I got a bachelor's in science and chemical engineering. What did you do after college? Uh, right after college, I was hired as an intern for Lush Fertilizer. And when did you start working as an intern for Lush? June of 2003. At this time, did you know the Doncourts? I did. I was close with their family growing up. And how was your relationship to Blake Doncourt before joining the company? Blake Doncourt was like a father to me. He was always a strong figure in my life. Did you receive any promotions? I did. After about three months, I was promoted to a full-time engineer. That's a, um, well, as an engineer, what exactly did you do for the company? I worked as a product development engineer and I was tasked with researching a specific compound in Drufo. And how good is your knowledge of Drufo? I would say that with my experience, I'm very knowledgeable on the topic. Um, objection, Your Honor, outside the, beyond the scope of knowledge, this uh, witness has not been entered as an expert. 
And uh, Mr. Maestas, I'm sorry, I missed the question. Would you please re-ask the question? I'm having a coughing problem here. Um, asked, how good is your knowledge of Drufo's development process? Uh, Drufo's what process? Drufo's development process. Ah, okay. Um, and the objection is lack of knowledge, lack of foundation, Ms. Lane? Uh, beyond the scope. Beyond the scope of what? The witness's knowledge. Well, that's what we're trying to find out, what her knowledge is. Uh, she hasn't been uh, qualified as an expert yet. We're just trying to find out. So I'll allow the question as a foundational question to see if she has that knowledge. Uh, uh, Ms. Durst, do you need the question re-asked? Uh, yes, please. Uh, Mr. Maces? So as a product development engineer, how good is your knowledge of Drufo's development process? Um, because I worked in the research and development uh, section of Lush Fertilizer, I feel like I'm very familiar and knowledgeable. Okay, and uh, based on that, I will overrule the objection. You may go ahead. Based off of the knowledge you gathered during your time as a product development engineer, what is Drufo? Uh, Drufo, from my knowledge, is a unique bonding agent that is used specifically in Lush's fertilizer. In your time at the company, did you conduct any studies on Drufo? I did. I was a part of the first in-house study on Drufo. And what did you find during your studies? Um, as a, a researcher in this study, I was tasked with researching and finding um, any data that could be useful. And one thing that really stuck out to me was a study from England finding that Drufo may be carcinogenic in rats. And what is the importance of it being carcinogenic in rats? This is extremely important because rats are used to test products that would be unethical to test on humans, and rats and humans are physiologically similar enough that it is relevant. Did you record these findings anywhere? I did. I recorded them to my notebook. When did you record these findings? In 2003, while I was researching. And how does the notebook system work? The way that this system works is I would record my data and findings in a notebook, which would then be submitted to my superior, Jerry Langley. And uh, from there, he would compile them into a larger compilation of my and my coworkers' findings. And how do you know Jerry, Longley, Jerry Langley saw your findings? I know that he saw my findings because I got an email in regards to the findings of my and my coworkers' data. Please Objection, let the Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. Um. The uh, well, Mr. Uh, Mr. Maestas. Um, well, we have not read any statement as of yet, so there's nothing to uh, call hearsay. I agree. Uh, the fact of a existence of a document is not hearsay, only its contents. So uh, objection overruled. You may proceed. Please let the record reflect that I am showing to opposing counsel what has previously been marked as Exhibit 4 for identification. And that should, be up, that should be up here from the timekeeper shortly. Yes. Do I need to repeat what exhibit is? Uh, four, correct? Yes. <clears throat> Excellent. Do you recognize this document? I do. What is this document? This is the email that Jerry Langley sent out to me and many of my coworkers. How do you know this is from the defendant? This is clearly from the defendant because Jerry Langley's name is at the top. It has been dated, recorded, and it's entirely accurate. Please take a look at it and let the jury know, does this document fairly and accurately reflect the note and the condition it was in when you received it? It does. Your Honor, at this time, the prosecution requests that the document previously marked as Exhibit 4, for identification, be entered into evidence. Its authenticity and its accuracy has been shown. Uh Ms. Lane, as to Exhibit 4, any objection? No, Your Honor. Uh, exhibit 4 will come into evidence then. Mr. Mace, just go right ahead. Please read the second paragraph of the email. Following our lab's June Drufo study, concerns have arisen regarding generalized findings of potential carcinogenic qualities identified in samples produced during a period early in the year. So we are reinitiating the study in the coming weeks with fresh product samples. 
Development engineers and lab techs are also invited to participate in briefings by senior management on target market positions and economic strategies planned for Drupal as the study refresh proceeds. How do you take that? Um, judging by this paragraph, they recognize that there is a potential concern for Drupal being a carcinogen. And what happened after this? So was there a second study after this email? There was. What happened after the second study? Um, after the second study, there was a meeting where me and my coworkers and many higher ups met. And what happened at this meeting? At this meeting, we had uh, many people speak and convey their findings in these studies. One that really stuck out to me though was a scientist working for uh, Lush Fertilizer expressed concerns that Drufo may not only be carcinogenic, but may also be directly linked to non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Objection, your honor hearsay, we don't have a statement from said scientist. And um, uh, Mr. Maestas? Uh, your honor, this statement is not being offered to um, affirm the matter asserted. It is only um, offered to um, the effect of the listener. And Ms. Lane? We'll, we'll address this in the cross. Uh, are you uh, resting on that uh, objection so far or do you wish to withdraw the objection? Um, I'll withdraw the objection, Your Honor. With objections withdrawn, Mr. Maces, you may continue. <clears throat> um, so just to um, confirm, you mentioned that higher ups at the company. Yes, and this included Alex Monroe and my superior, Jerry Langley. Did any of them have anything to say? Yes, uh, specifically Alex Monroe. He said, let's keep this in the walls. Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. And uh, that, I'm sorry, that was a statement by Langley, is that correct? Monroe. Oh, uh, Monroe. Um, uh, Mr. Maestas. Your Honor, this is an, an admission by a party opponent. All right, and who, uh, where am I seeing this statement by Monroe? Is this just an oral representation uh, this, made by the witness? Within Carson Durst's statement, um, they talk about um, what Alex Monroe said. Oh, at the meeting? At the meeting, correct. All right, and uh, uh, again, Mr. Maestas, what is, uh, why is that not hearsay? Because Alex Monroe is a higher up within the company and him saying this is an admission by a party opponent. All right, uh, I'm gonna have to have some foundation about Alex Monroe because I don't see that name here on the uh, uh, email and I don't know who he is. So you're gonna have to lay a foundation with your witness that this, uh, this is a person in management in the company. Um, Carson Durst, can you please read the third name that this email was sent to under the to list? The third person in this list that this email was sent to is Alex Monroe. Yeah, that's not enough. I've got Jerry Langley identified as product manager. Well, that's management. I have no idea who Alex Monroe is. So um, it could be someone's cousin on that uh, uh, list of names. So I need more than that. Um, Your Honor, um, could I please read a part of Carson Durst's statement? Uh, you may ask uh, Mr. Durst about that, or Ms. Durst about that, because you've got her on the stand. Okay. Who Alex uh, Monroe is. With that, then we'll just move on. Um, so after this meeting, what did Mr. Doncor have to say? Um, after this meeting, I spoke to Blake Doncourt about um, some issues that had arisen, and he basically dismissed all of my concerns and told me to grow up. Um, and, objection, Your Honor. Uh, hearsay. And um, Mr. Maestas? Your Honor, the witness is testifying on what she, um, on how she took what Mr. Doncor had to say, not exactly on the truth of the matter asserted. Mm. Uh, Ms. Lane. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? You cut out for me. The witness is testifying on how she took what Mr. Doncor had to say, not to assert the, not the, not to assert the truth of the matter asserted. I believe the witness uh, quoted Mr. Doncor when we do not have a statement from him currently. I could repeat the question and um, ask the witness to refrain from quoting. Oh, if, you, if you wish to uh, withdraw, 
or if you wish to withdraw the question, that's fine. We'll go on. If you want me to rule on it, I will. Um, can I re-ask the question and ask the yes, witness? You may. Yes, you okay. may. And what did Mr. Doncourt, um, okay, so how did you take um, what Mr. Doncourt said? Uh, Mr. Doncourt's response seemed dismissive and I felt that I, that I wasn't truly being heard or respected. Objection, Your Honor, speculation. And um, uh, Mr. Uh, Maestas? This is how the, um, the witness is testifying on how she felt, not how Mr. Doncourt felt. I agree, uh, object, that objection overruled. And uh, I believe the witness has answered, so you may uh, uh, continue. And what do you feel caused this change, Mr. Doncourt? The only thing I can think of is that this change in behavior only happened after I had submitted my research suggesting that Drufo may be carcinogenic. What did you think after meeting Mr. Doncourt about the company? Could you repeat the question, please? What did you think about the company after your meeting with Mr. Doncourt? I felt that I had no future with the company. They uh, disregarded me and I did not feel wanted. And then what did you do next? I began looking for jobs. And did you find a job? I did. I found a job at Terra's Greenery where I now work. And when did you start working for Terra's Greenery? 2006. While at Lush, did you ever hear of baking the fertilizer? I did. It came up, it came up in a report after the second study. And what it was the baking, what was the importance of baking the fertilizer within the report? Uh, this report detailed that baking the Drufo would eliminate all possibilities of it causing cancer or being a carcinogen. And how did Lush respond to the recommendations? They had no changes. They chose not to bake their Drufo. What does this mean to you? This means that they saw an opportunity to eliminate all possibilities of causing cancer, and they made the conscious choice not to. Objection, Your Honor, speculation. Uh, Mr. Maestas? Your Honor, my witness just repeated the facts of the case about Lush not baking the fertilizer, even though they had the recommendation, meaning that there was no speculation about what happened. Uh, Ms. Lane? I don't believe this witness was ever part of upper management during their time at Lush Fertilizer, and they just said that upper management chose not to bake their fertilizer. I'm confused how the witness would know what upper management is thinking. Permission uh, to respond? Uh, yes. The witness never never asserted um, that they knew what the management was thinking. They just said what the management did by not choosing to bake the fertilizer. Um, I'm uh, To the extent that um, I'm going to overrule the objection, but because it, uh, the witness could have said, this is what the management did, and that would not be speculation because they didn't bake the product. What she said was they chose not to do it. Well, it's a conscious decision to do something or not do something. So in effect, they chose to do it uh, in the sense that it needs to be considered by the jury that the company didn't bake the product, whether they did it or didn't choose to do it uh, is the same issue. Uh, six of one half dozen of the other, I'll allow it. Um, it may be a little inartful by the witness, but uh, I'll allow it. Overruled, Mr. Macy's, you can continue. Ms. Duncourt, um, well, Blake Duncourt retains that you fake the email marked exhibit four. How do you respond? That is entire, entirely inaccurate. Um, Blake Duncourt was sent this email, it's been dated, it's been documented, and it's been recorded. Um, no further questions, thank you. And Ms. Lane, cross-exam. Yes, Your Honor. Um, hello, Ms. Durst. Is this your first time testifying against Lush? It is. I'd like to direct your attention to page seven of your witness statement, line 138. Uh, you previously gave a statement in this case, correct? I did. Um, and the statement was under oath? Yes. And you understood the importance of telling the truth in that statement, correct? Yes. Um, as I stated before, please look at page seven, uh, line 138 of your witness statement. Are you able to do that? I am not. Uh, you may read that, Ms. Lane, in the absence of the 
because we're virtual here uh, in the absence of Ms. Durst not having that, you may read it and then ask her if that is uh, a correct statement of what she said. Um, the line reads, uh, <laughs> When Lush Fertilizer found out, and this would be about you entering your job at Terra's Greenery, a legal battle ensued. That is correct. So I'll ask the question again. Is this your first time testifying against Lush? In this case, yes. But we did have another settlement where we uh, talked about my non-disclosure agreement. Um, your Honor, I'm not sure how to properly ask this, but permission to impeach the witness? She may. Objection, improper impeachment. Well, we, we haven't had it yet. If you have a document or a statement to impeach her with, you may um, uh, provide that to her and we can go forward. Um, well, the witness uh, testified <laughs> just- Oh, I, I see, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Based on that previous statement, she has been impeached. Well, that's for the jury to decide if she is impeached okay. or not. You have given the jury all they need as to what she said today and what she said in her statement. Let's move forward. Either she is or is not impeached, but that's for the jury to decide. You may go forward. You've done the process. Okay. Uh, Ms. Durst, you work for Terra's Greenery as the lead product developer, is that correct? That is correct. What year did you begin your work for Terrace Greenery? 2006. And what year did you start your career in the fertilizer business? 2003. And your first job in this industry and ever was with Lush, is that correct? That is what I have stated, yes. And you know Blake Doncourt, founder and CEO of Lush personally, correct? Yes, like I said before, he was like family to me. And uh, you left your job due to an issue you were having with your supervisor? That is correct. And you went to see Blake Doncourt about this. That is correct. Would you say he did or did not support you in your argument against your fellow colleague? Like I said before, I did not feel like he was supporting me. Would you say you felt betrayed by Blake Doncourt for not supporting you in this matter? I do. As an employee, as an, as an employee of his company, I did not feel like I was being listened to or heard. So you believe that your personal friend, whom you've known for a very long time, didn't support you? That is true. And you and his son Charles were best friends throughout childhood and even college, right? Correct. And you went to school together? Yes. Arizona State? Yes. Would you describe yourself as a student in the top of the class? I was not at the top of my class, but I did well enough to get a job. And what did you major in, Ms. Durst? Chemical engineering. So you're an engineer, not a toxicologist? That is correct. Projection, relevance. Uh, and the relevance of this, Ms. Lane? I'm just trying to make sure the jury understands the span of this witness's expertise. Mr. Maestas? Um, objection withdrawn. Uh, objections withdrawn. Ms. Lane, you may move forward. Thank you. So neither are you an oncologist? No. Nor an epidemiologist? No. Medical doctor? No. Thank you. Did you plan on working for Lush while you were post-grad job hunting? I was looking for other jobs, but my friend Charles told me that I could uh, potentially get a job at Lush. Would you say that you and Charles commiserated regarding post-grad jobs? Could you please rephrase the question? Would you say you and Charles commiserated regarding post-grad jobs? We did talk about it, yes. Okay. And uh, so you were introduced to the job by the CEO's son rather than the CEO himself? That is correct. And you entered as an intern, correct? As I have stated, yes. And Blake Doncourt chose to hire you over top of their class Ivy League graduates, correct? Yes, and I proved that I deserve my place there with my hard work and continuous effort. And in a matter of three short months, you were promoted to a full-time job, correct? Yes. And that was as head product development engineer? As a product development engineer, yes. 
And part of this new job was to research chemical compounds that compromise Drupo, right? Yes. And how many were you personally tasked with researching? Just one, I believe. Did you find any outside studies that said Drufo may be carcinogenic? I did. As I've already stated, I found one from England uh, suggesting it may be carcinogenic in rats. Would you consider rats and humans to be equals? As I said before, they are not equals, but it would be unethical. Thank you. To and uh, your part of this job was to find if this product was dangerous to humans, correct? Correct and let these dangers, if any, be known to your superiors and have them apply proper warning labels if this was the case, right? Yes, and I did submit my findings. And yet there were no warnings applied. That is correct. Do you believe there's something wrong or dangerous about Drufo? I don't believe I can testify to whether or not it is dangerous. I can only testify to what I know about the company and the chemical itself. Um, Mr. in your professional opinion, would you be, do you believe there is something wrong or dangerous about Drufo? As I said before, um, there was a study saying that it may be carcinogenic in rats. And since rats are physiologically similar to humans, I feel that it is a concern that should be looked into. But it's not dangerous? I don't know that I have the expertise to say. Thank you, Your Honor. No further questions. Uh, Mr. Maestas, redirect. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Um, Mr. do you remember the legal battle that ensued um, when you left when you left um, Lush Fertilizer? Yes. Were you testifying in this legal battle? I believe it was resolved. So, um, so it is resolved, and it's no longer a concern. Is that what you're yes, saying? it has been resolved for months and everything has been settled. All right. Um, how does being an engineer qualify you to um, study Drufo? Um, it shows that I've done the research and I've recorded my findings that I know about this chemical. And um, that will be all, Your Honor. Thank you. And Ms. Lane, any uh, recross on those issues? Yes, Your Honor. Um, Mr. it has been many, many years since you have researched Drufo at Lush Fertilizer, correct? That is correct. Thank you, Your Honor. No further questions. Uh, thank you, Ms. Durst. Uh, your testimony is complete and you are uh, excused. Thank you. Uh, we'll now have the uh, last or third witness, I should say, uh, for the plaintiff. I believe it's Dr. Rogers and... Uh, um, Mr. Wilson, you are going to be doing um, the direct, correct? That is correct. And we have um, Ms. Doyle doing the cross. Correct. Correct. Good. Uh, and uh, Mr. Wilson, if you'd call your witness to the stand. Your Honor, the plaintiff calls Dr. Casey Rogers to the stand. And Dr. Rogers, you have been sworn. Mr. Wilson, you may continue. Hello, Dr. Rogers. My name is Haven Wilson. I'm going to be asking you some questions. Can you state your name and spell your last name for the court? Hello, my name is Dr. Casey Rogers. That's R-O-G-E-R-S. Great. Did you attend any form of higher education? Yes, I did. Where did you attend this higher education? I earned my Bachelor of Science degree in Agriculture and Chemistry from the Colorado State University. And I also earned my PhD in Agriculture and Entomology from the University of California at Berkeley. Are you currently employed? Yes, I am. Uh, who is your employer? I am a professor in the Horticulture and Entomology Department at Berkeley. Does the chemical Drufo ring a bell for you? Yes, I've researched Drufo for many years. Uh, do, you, do you have any prior experience with the chemical? Yes, um, I've published six articles, four of which are about Drufo. Can you elaborate any further on these articles? Well, for example, in 20, 2017, I published 
the evidence of human exposure to Drufo, a review in the environmentalist. That's one of the four articles about Drufo that I published, and I also conducted a study. Your Honor, at this time, we tender Dr. Rogers as an expert witness in the field of the effects of Drufo on humans. Her knowledge, skill, and education qualify her for this position. And in what areas? Uh, I heard toxicology. Um, agriculture, entomology, and the effects of Drufo on humans. Oh, didn't I guess I she's I thought I heard something about toxicology. I, uh, <clears throat> I believe that's in Dr. Williams' statement. Oh, uh, sorry, I uh, was confusing it then. Uh, so, agriculture and what other area? Entomology and the effects of Drufo on humans. Ah, and um, Ms. Doyle, any objection to any of those three areas as far as qualification for an expert? Just to the effects of Drufo on humans, I don't believe Dr. Rogers has any formal education as a medical doctor. Uh, I know I, I didn't hear that either, but I did hear that she did some research. Um, are you challenging that she did not do that research? I believe she did the research, but I don't believe that the research would um, span her knowledge uh, greatly enough to be able to testify to this subject. Uh, Mr. Wilson? Um, one does not have to be a medical doctor to know about what causes the non-Hodgkin lymphoma. Um, I'm going to qualify the witness as an expert in agriculture, entomology, if that's uh, at issue in this case. I'm not sure that it is, but I'll qualify her there. And as to the extent of her um, research into Drufo, uh, she may not know everything about it, but she apparently knows something. So I'll qualify her to the extent of that. If she gets beyond that area, of course, that may be challenged during her testimony, but I'll qualify her as an expert. Mr. Wilson, you may go ahead. Dr. Rogers, do you know what happens when people are exposed to Drufo for extended periods of time? Yes, there is a very high scientific probability that those exposed to Drufo will develop non-Hodgkin lymphoma. What is non-Hodgkin lymphoma? Non and uh, uh, is there an objection? Yes. And that objection is? Um, I, be um, I believe it is... Um, Lack of personal knowledge. Mr. Wilson. As I've previously stated, I was simply asking her what non-Hodgkin lymphoma is for the purpose of the jury. Okay, and uh, uh, Ms. Doyle, any uh, does that affect your objection at all, that response? I, I, continue, I hold my objection. I don't believe that the witness can testify to a disease as she is not a medical doctor. All right, uh, I'm going to overrule the objection, although uh, she cannot testify necessarily to um, um, all causes of the disease or how it uh, might affect someone, you know, what the symptoms of it are, things like that. But as to the existence of, an, of the disease in the scope of her research, that has apparently been established by others that she has, uh, whose report she's read or the research that she's done that uh, there uh, is a causal connection. And uh, uh, she does not need to be the expert in um, uh, lymphoma to testify to that. She merely is the expert as to the research she's done as to the connection between Drufo and that disease, not as to the disease itself. So I will allow the testimony uh, why don't you ask the question again, Mr. Wilson? Uh, I did go on there for some time and she, the witness has probably forgotten. Again, what is non-Hodgkin lymphoma? Non-Hodgkin lymphoma is a specific type of cancer that affects the white blood cells, which are also called lymphocytes. Um, that is part of the immune system. So people with this cancer become more susceptible to disease. Um, is this disease genetic? It is not genetic. It's caused by environmental conditions. What sort of environmental conditions? That can include pesticides like Drufo, which can be absorbed through the skin or inhaled through the respiratory system. Have you formed a conclusion within a reasonable degree of scientific certainty that Drufo has a direct correlation to non-Hodgkin lymphoma? 
Yes, I have. And what is that opinion? As an expert witness, it is not a rumor, but my expert opinion that DRUFO causes non-Hodgkin lymphoma. Your Honor, no further questions. And Ms. Doyle, cross-exam. Yes. Um, hello, Dr. Rogers. Hello. Is today your first day testifying as an expert witness? Yes, this is my first time um, as an expert witness. And so as you stated in your witness statement that if this case goes as if it should, you would be on the forefront of many class action lawsuits in the future. Is this correct? Objection, Your Honor. Relevance? Um, uh, Ms. Doyle? I'm trying to lay foundation to show a possible financial bias for Dr. Rogers in this case. Mr. Wilson? I am questioning the relevance of uh, Dr. Dr. Casey Rogers' future endeavors. Uh I'm going to uh, um, overrule the objection, credibility of a witness, which does include bias, and what might happen uh, in the future, what is uh, prospective, uh, is always an issue. Credibility is always an issue. So overruled, you may re-ask the question, Ms. Doyle. Thank you. Now, as you stated in your witness statement earlier, that if this case goes as if it should, you would be on the forefront of many class action lawsuits to come in the future. Is this correct? I did write that in my statement, yes. Now, thank you. Was your study peer reviewed? My study has not been submitted and published, but so it has not been peer reviewed yet. Thank you. Isn't it true that this study was not controlled to include smokers? My um, focus of the study was any adverse health effects that Drufo has, so smokers didn't have anything to do with that. Okay. How about drug users? No. Uh, did it take into account different geography and environment? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Yes, of course. Did your study take into account different geography and environment? No, my study did not. Thank you. What about other known groups with high cancer rates? My study was only organized into groups of exposure. Thank you. Now, your study does include farmers, correct? Yes, those exposed in my study included farm laborers and gardeners. Thank you. And do you believe that farmers, even garden laborers, could have used any other products than Drufo in their work, such as other pesticides and fertilizers? Objection, speculation, or calls for speculation? Oh, Ms. Doyle? I'm just asking the witness in her expert opinion if these farmers in her own study could have used any other products in Drufa. Uh, Mr. Wilson, does that change your objection? No, you're asking her to compare apples to oranges in a sense. Like you're asking, sorry. You know what, I, I withdraw my objection. All right, the objection is withdrawn. You may re-ask the question, Ms. Doyle. Thank you. Dr. Rogers, do you believe that farmers could have used any products other than Drufo in their work, such as pesticides and fertilizers? Yes. And would you agree that environmental factors could cause non-Hodgkin lymphoma? Yes, because non-Hodgkin lymphoma is not genetic. Thank you. Now, would you agree with me in saying the definition of correlation is a relation existing between variables which tend to vary in a way not expected on the basis of chance? I believe that's the definition. Thank you. So um, would you agree that causation and correlation are the same thing? Mm, no, I don't, they are not the same thing. Thank you. To reduce the risk of any possible adverse effects to Drufo, the user should wear long sleeve pants and even a mask, is this correct? Yes, because Drufo is a carcinogen and it can be absorbed through the skin or inhaled. Thank you. Did the defendant do this? Objection, relevance. Um, uh, the objection is on relevance. relevance. Uh, I'm uh, not gonna take a response. It is relevant. There may be an objection here, but it's not a relevance objection. Um, uh, er previous uh, testimony has established that it is relevant, it's on the, it's on the uh, label. And we've had testimony from the plaintiff that uh, 
she did not wear any of that, but there may be a different objection, but not that one. Any, any, any other objection to the question? I suppose asked and answered. Uh, not that one either. Let's continue. Thank you. Um, Dr. Rogers, um, did the defendant do these things? Typically, um, personal protective equipment is not provided to the workers, so I believe she didn't. Thank you. And when you studied a group of people that did use Drufo with these coverings, your results were inconclusive, is this correct? The part of my study that um, was about the exposure of Drufo, that was conclusive. However, the part of my study for mitigating exposure with protective equipment was not, was not conclusive. Thank you. And you state that non-Hodgson's lymphoma is caused by pesticides, correct? Um, not, in, not entirely by pesticides. It's by environmental conditions, which includes pesticides. It includes pesticides, correct? Yeah. And is Drufo um, or Lush a fertilizer? Sorry, can you repeat that? Of course. Is Drufo or the ingredient Drufo in a fertilizer? Yes, Drufo is an ingredient in Lush's fertilizer. And Dr. Rogers, what is your PhD in? I have a PhD in agriculture and entomology from Berkeley. And could we define uh, the definition of etymology as a branch of zoology concerned with the study of insects? Yes, that's correct. And agriculture as the practice of garden cultivation and management? Yes. So you are only trained in gardening and insects. This has nothing to do with humans, correct? I can say are that- Are you, Your Honor, argumentative? Uh, I don't consider that argumentative on, on cross. It might have been on uh, direct, but not on cross. Well, let's continue. Thank you. Uh, do, would you like me to repeat the question? Yes. You were only trained in basically gardening and insects. This has nothing to do with humans, correct? I'm, I can say that entomology is the study of insects and because Drufo is a pesticide that um, is relevant, my expertise in entomology is relevant to this case. And I also want to mention that I have a bachelor of science degree. Objection. The witness is non-responsive. I'm sorry, she hasn't finished her uh, answer. You may finish, doctor. Thank you. Your, your um, undergrad degree. I have a Bachelor of Science degree in agriculture and chemistry as well. All right, thank you. Uh, Dr. Rogers, have you ever gone through any medical training? I have not. So Dr. Rogers, you have made the claim that Drufo is linked to the terrible disease of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma based on a study that has never been peer reviewed, correct? Yes. You made this claim based on a study never been replicated, correct? My specific study has not been replicated. However, there have been reports on the possible carcinogenicity of Drufo. The study looked at loosely controlled groups that were never intended to include other groups with high cancer rates, correct? My study was organized into groups with different levels of exposure, yes. But loosely controlled groups, correct? Never were... to include high groups of cancer rates. Sorry, can you repeat that? I did not hear. Yes, these groups were never intended to include groups with high cancer rates, correct? These groups were only- I should honor a vague question. Uh, I think the witness understood it. She was about to answer. I'll allow the uh, witness to answer and then we'll have time. I was going to say that the groups were, my study was only focused on the effect of Drufo. Thank you. And that uh, concludes the cross-examination. Um, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Wilson, any redirect? No, Your Honor. Uh, without redirect, there is no time left for recross. So, uh, Dr. Uh, um, Rogers, Dr. Rogers, uh, your testimony is completed. Thank you. You are excused. Thank you, Your Honor. And Ms. Flores, uh, as lead counsel, do we have any additional witnesses for the plaintiff? 
No, Your Honor. Uh, does the plaintiff rest? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Uh, we will have the defense case. And uh, I believe um, uh, Ms. Lane, who is our, um, well, uh, Ms. Doyle, your lead counsel, who is our uh, next witness and who will the attorney be? Uh, no, our first witness is um, uh, Blake Doncourt. Blake Doncourt and Ms. Lane is going to take that witness, is that correct? Correct. Okay, give me just a moment. And uh, let's see here. For Blake Doncourt, it looks like um, Ms. Flores is going to do the uh, cross-examination, correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay, hang on just a moment then. Just get organized again here. And... Give me a chance to get into my scoring sheet. Um, Don Court is the next witness. Okay, and uh, Ms. Um, uh, Lane, you may call your first witness. Thank you, Your Honor. I call Blake Don Court to the sand. And Ms. Don Court, you are uh, have been sworn. Uh, Ms. Lane, you may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Would you please state your name and spell your last name for the record? Blake Doncourt, D-O-N-C-O-U-R-T-T. -T. Good afternoon, Ms. Doncourt. Could you tell me why we're here today? Well, my company is being accused of ignoring a known and potentially dangerous carcinogen in our product. I was wondering, what is your job? I am this um, chief executive officer at Lush Fertilizer, and I have helped the company grow since 2000 from one of the um, one of the unknown producers of fertilizer to one of the world's largest suppliers of yard and commercial fertilizers. As CEO of this business, how would you describe it? Even though Lush started out as a small company, it has now grown to be one of the world's largest producers of, um, well, largest suppliers of yard and commercial fertilizers. And in fact, its success has even allowed me to direct 10% of our profits to charities. Have you ever started your own charity? Yes, we have. We actually have a charity that works to clean the most polluted areas of the world's oceans. Um, thank you. Uh, speaking of lush, Lush's charity work, your company not only gives back to the environment, but also the community? Yes, um, we at Lush take pride in our env environmental activism and our, um, our product even works to reduce um, the nitrogen in the world's atmosphere. And we have also received, Lush has received an SEAL award, um, Business and Sus Sustainability Award, and I myself have been nominated for the United Nations Champions of the Earth Award. Thank you. So your company has been accused of including a so-called dangerous bonding agent in your product. Why don't you tell us about that? Yes, um, Lush and I are being accused of ignoring a known carcinogen in our product. But before putting the product on the market, we conducted extensive research and none of which identified this. On our lack of expertise. And I'm sorry, Ms. Flores, the objection is what? Lack of expertise. Uh, Ms. Uh, Lane? Um, my client is the CEO of her company and is merely talking about what her company has been accused of. Uh, Ms. Flores? I still don't see how um, Ms. Doncourt could talk about her knowledge on Drupal as she's still not an expert witness, or she's not an expert witness. All right. Uh, I'm going to uh, overrule the objection. The uh, the testimony uh, is not about, well, the, the, her testimony was about what her company did, the fact of what it did or what, what it did not do. Uh, she does not need expertise in those areas 
to re uh, recite a report, essentially, of what the company did. So uh, uh, objection is overruled. Ms. Lane, you may continue. Um, thank you. Ms. Doncor, I understand you're not an expert witness in this case, but I'd just like to ask you, in your personal opinion, would you say that your product is safe and clean? Yes, I would. Is your product government approved? Yes, it is government approved. If the accusations being made against you were true, would you have done anything differently when releasing the product? Of course, I would have insisted that we include extensive warning labels. And if dangerous enough, I would have never released this product. It's um, unimaginable hurting another human being. Did you include a warning label in your product? Yes, we did include a warning label on our product. It was nothing like a spacesuit. It was just long pants and a long sleeve t-shirt, et cetera. Are there any valid studies proving that your product is dangerous and or in need of these labels? Um, no, none. Um, I know many people have um, claimed to do studies regarding my product, but none of these studies have been published in a scientific journal. And so there is no evidence that these studies even exist. And did Carson Durst work for your company at one point in time? He did. And what exactly was Carson's job at Lush? Um, well, Carson's job was to identify specific risks and dangers within our product and to um, tell us right away. And has Carson made a claim against you today? Yes, um, I heard Carson testify that testify against me for finan financial motivation to put a dangerous product in human hands. Did Carson ever bring up the fact that Drufo could even could have even the slightest uh, chance of being dangerous while working for you? Uh, no, not until after he was fired. And that was his entire job, right? To let you know if the product was dangerous? Yes. Did you ever get an email discussing the dangers of Drufo? No. So what about the email Carson Durst presented? Um, the search of our computers did not turn up such an email. And where did Carson go to work after he worked for you? He went to Tara's Greenery, which, as you may know, is our competitor. And it was not only till after he went to Tara's Greenery in which he started to make claims against me and my company. Thank you, Your Honor. No further questions. Uh, thank you. And um, uh, I'm sorry, Ms. Flores, uh, cross-exam. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, good afternoon, Ms. Doncor. My name is Caroline Flores, and I will be asking you a few questions today. Good afternoon. You are the CEO of Lush Fertilizer, correct? Yes. You have been growing this company for over two decades? Um, yes. Lush Fertilizer works really well, correct? That's correct. And you're very proud of your product because it gives you the opportunity to give the American homeowner have a beautiful lawn. Yeah. You have worked day and night to make Lush the profit of company that it is today? I have. In order to make Lush the profit of company that it is today, you produce a pesticide actually containing Drupal, yes? Yes, um, our product works to reduce the amount of nitrogen in the atmosphere, so yes, we did. This is a part of all of your fertilizers produced in the U.S., yes? Yes. Your Honor, permission to show the witness what has been marked as Exhibit 1? I think we've had Exhibit 1. It is admitted. Uh, we can see it again. Thank you. I believe my um, the timekeepers will pull up the exhibit. So I'm, my I'm sure it's, pretty I'm late. Sure it's coming. Okay. Yeah. Again, I apologize for the delay, Your Honor. 
not a problem. No, I'm sorry, but we have technical difficulties. Could you please repeat which exhibit we need? Uh, this ex exhibit one. There we go. All right, um, Ms. Doncourt, please look at exhibit one. Under the active ingredients, Strufo is the first ingredient listed, correct? Yes, correct. The second ingredient listed is nitrogen, right? Yes. Because Lush is a profit company that it is today, you can donate 10% of your profits to charities. Yes, that's correct. Charities that work to reduce the amount of nitrogen in the world? Yes. Objection, your honor, asked and answered. Uh, not in this examination, uh, perhaps in yours, but not in this one. So on cross, uh, uh, the question can be asked again, overruled. Ms. Flores, continue. Would you like for me to repeat the question? Ms. Doncourt? Oh, um, yes, please. Um, the second ingredient listed is nitrogen, right? I mean, sorry, charities that work to um, reduce the amount of nitrogen in the world? Yes. Also, on this table, you have certain hazards, right? We do. I'm directing your attention to the section of hazards where it says keep out of reach from children, correct? Yes. And then you have a caution there. And before I ask you to comment on the caution, your warning labels are very important, aren't they? They are very important. And over the 20 years that you have testified that you run this company, and so as you've had many opportunities to review your safety recommendations. I have, but I didn't see a need. And you would want those safety recommendations to be accurate? I would, definitely. And complete? Yes. And thorough? Yes. If you please look now again at exhibit one under the heading hazards, by the word caution, please read silently while I read aloud. Causes eye irritation, period. Avoid contact with eyes of clothing, period. Did I read that correctly? Yes. You mentioned that people should wear protective clothing that covers exposed skin, yes? Yes, I have. Because you are aware that your pesticide can be dangerous to use? Um, it is, but our known carcinogens in our product was none. Thank you. But you maintain that your pesticide has little to no risk. Yes. I invite your attention to exhibit one again and under the heading user safety recommendations, please read along silently as I read aloud that first paragraph. As with any spray fertilizer, utilize protective clothing that covers exposed skin or N95 face mask is recommended. Follow, follow manufacturer's instructions for cleaning slash maintaining. Did I read that correctly? You did. Wouldn't the same safety recommendations have to include spray fertilizer? Um, can you repeat the question, please? Wouldn't the same safety recommendations have to include spray fertilizer? Um, I suppose. Is that a yes? Yes. And you recommend using a respirator? I do. To avoid inhaling fumes? Um, yes, as with any other fertilizer. Chemical. You also recommend using an N95 mask. Yes. But the respirator will be more effective, correct? Correct. So you recommend both knowing that the respirator is more effective than the N95, yes? Yes, some people can't get a respirator. All right, let's move on. You believe that the studies done by the plaintiff are not conclusive? Yes, I do believe that. You believe that the studies were performed by a hired gun? Um, yes. A hired gun that is now making a lot more money as an expert than a researcher. Uh, well, I don't know if he's making enough money for, um, more money for sure, but yes. Okay, now let's start talking about money, Ms. Doncourt. Um, you could have prevented action, your honor relevance. How does Blake Doncourt's income um, relate to Dakota Weirs's disease? So, so the objection is relevance? Yes. And uh, Ms. Flores? I believe it is relevant because Lush is, according to Ms. Doncourt, a profit company. So I want to talk about how money is a big factor in this case as well. Uh, permission to respond, your honor? Yes, you may. We're here today because Dakota Weirs is suing um, this company for a million dollars. 
and Blake Doncourt's income, I don't believe has to do with the reason why Dakota is suing, which is her illness. Uh, Ms. Flores, what's the, what was the specific question again? You could have prevented any risk of cancer by baking your product. No, no, that wasn't the question. Oh, I just said, let's start talking about money. It wasn't a question. It was just, I just said a comment. Let's start talking about money. Oh, uh, I, I okay. Uh, let, let's, let's go back and I miss, I apparently missed something. So let's ask your question of this witness again and see if it draws an objection. I must have missed something. I did not ask a question, Your Honor. I just made a comment. I said, okay, now let's start talking about money, Ms. Don. As a category, okay, let's have a question and then we'll see if it draws an objection. Ms. Don, you could have prevented any risk of cancer by baking your product, yes? Well, the truth is baking our fertilizer wouldn't really change much, but yes. In fact, that's what your own scientists recommended, yes? Yes. Um, Your Honor, I will now like to permission to show opposing counsel and the witness what has been marked as Exhibit 8 for identification. Exhibit 8, uh, we'll have that up uh, screen shared. And there is eight. Um, Ms. Dongford, I've just shown you what has been previously marked as exhibit eight. Do you recognize this? I do. What is this? This is my profits over the years. Who made this document? Um, I'm not sure at the moment. I'm sorry, you said you're not sure? Um, oh, um, I did. All right, um, when you began keeping this ledger, was this something you had to relay, to rely on to track your profits? Um, I, I guess, yes. Does the company frequently track their financial spendings? Yes. Ms. Sankara, are you familiar with these um, findings? I am. Is this a complete and accurate depiction of the report? Yes. Is it accurate? It is accurate. Is complete? Yes, it is complete. Your Honor, plaintiff moves for the entry of Exhibit A into evidence. Its authenticity has been stipulated and its accuracy has been shown. Uh, as to Exhibit 8, uh, Ms. Lane? Uh, same objection as before. I am not understanding how my client's finances weigh into Dakota Weir's illness. And Ms. Flores? This plays a big factor because without Blake Doncourt baking its product, and right here clearly says that without, um, how can I explain this? That if Blake uh, chose to not, not bake the product, it, would, it saved a lot of money. And Ms. Lane? This could have reduced, I'm sorry, and I also want to um, add furthermore that, and this could have redu reduced the risk of, um, of cancer, of baking the Jufa to reduce the risk of any chance of having cancer. And Ms. Lane? Uh, we're not looking at the percentage in which uh, the risk for cancer would lower. We're looking at money. Uh, understood. I'm going to uh, overrule the objection. There is an alleged connection between uh, the risk, however great it is, small or large, and whether or not the, the cost of baking is a risk benefit. Uh, uh, analysis, whether the reducing the uh, alleged risk is worth um, the money that it costs. So there is an issue here uh, for the jury, and I'll uh, uh, allow them to hear it. And uh, Ms. Flores, you may continue if you need to re-ask the question. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Ms. Doncourt, and you chose not to bake your product because it was expensive, right? Well, baking our product. I I I'm out. sorry. I'm sorry, we were at the point of an objection to the admission of the document. The document is now admitted and Ms. Uh, Flores, you may ask the question, I'm sorry. All right, um, can you answer my question, please? Uh, can you repeat the question, please? 
you chose to not bake this fertilizer because I mean bake uh Drufo because or your product because it was expensive, right? Baking our fertilizer wouldn't really I change much. Yes, so. no, Miss Don Court. Uh, uh, yes, it didn't I'm make sorry. I'm going to let the witness answer the question as she will. It is not technically a yes or no question. It asks for more than that. So please answer. Um, the truth is, as I stated above, baking our fertilizer wouldn't really change much. So yes, it didn't make financial sense. No further questions, Your Honor. I, I'm sorry? Uh, no further questions. Oh, thank you. Uh, and uh, Ms. Lane, um, read direct. Yes, Your Honor. Um, Ms. Doncourt, could you please explain to the court how, if at all, your finances could affect Dakota Weirs' illness? I don't believe my finances in any way could have affected Dakota Weirs' illness. So do you believe that this weighs into the case? No, not at all. Thank you, Ms. Doncourt. And thank you, Your Honor. No further questions. And Ms. Flores, any re-cross? No, Your Honor. Thank you. And Ms. Doncourt, uh, that concludes your testimony. You are excused. Thank you very much. And our next, um, is our next witness Skylar Weirs? Looks like it is. Uh, Ms. Lane will be doing the uh, direct examination again. And give me just a moment. Um, Skylar Weirs. Yes, Mr. Maestas will be doing the uh, cross. Hold on just a moment. And this is Skylar. And... Okay, and Ms. Lane, you may call your next witness. Uh, your Honor, I'd like to call Skylar Weirs to the stand. And uh, Ms. Weirs, you have been uh, sworn in already, so Ms. Lane, you may begin. Could you please state your name and spell your last name for the record? Uh, my name is Skylar Weirs, W-E-I-R-S. Hello, Skylar. Uh, today, we're just going to start with a simple question. What do you do for work? I'm a journalist. And what schooling do you have in this subject? Um, I went to college. I don't have a college degree, though, but I do extensive research, so I know what I'm talking about in my articles. How long does it normally take you for you to accumulate research on, let's say, one subject? It takes me nearly a year to get everything together and organized uh, just for, yeah, First. just for one subject. Fascinating. What normal area of writing do you like to stick to? Um, I don't have a normal area that I like to stick to, but I do uh, love to write about modern architect and GMOs. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Did you say modern agritech? Yes. Thank you. Uh, how do you write these articles? Well, like I said, it takes me nearly a year to find all the evidence, all the research, correct research uh, to be able to form an article. Have you ever written about Drufo? Yes, I have many years ago. And how much research did it take for you to write this article? Uh, nearly a year. Um, Your Honor, I would like to offer Skylar Weirs as an expert in modern agritech pursuit to rule 702. Give me just a moment. Modern agritech. Okay. And uh, Mr. Maestas, any objection to qualifying this witness in that area? I do object. And uh, do you uh, have an objection or do you want to uh, have the voir dire first? I would like the voir dire. You may. Um, you write for the Rational Society, correct? Yes, I do. And this is 
promoted, and this is focusing on promoting scientific skepticism, as you said it earlier, correct? Yes. Subjects, uh, subjects of scientific skepticism would fall into things like vaccinations, correct? Yes. Um, Your Honor, objection relevance. I'm trying to admit my witness as a uh, as an expert in modern agritech, not vaccination. Uh, Mr. Uh, Maestas? I'm just trying to find some foundation for why the rationalist is relevant to um, her expertise. Um, why, why her, in the publication that publishes what she does, I'm not sure if it's her employer, but that's the connection you're trying to make? Uh, correct, and why it's relevant to her expertise. Ms. Lane? Um, I don't believe my uh, client uh, stated that they work for Rationalist Magazine before you started your voir dire. Uh, but she do apparently does publish there. Uh, that's, uh, I, don't un I don't believe that's in question. Uh, I'm gonna allow a little latitude here. Let's see where this goes. Uh, if, uh, if I decide it is not, uh, further inquiry is not appropriate, I'll rule on that later. But Mr. Macias, you may continue with uh, the foundation of her expertise on, on uh, voir dire. You were asked by your editor to write a series of articles for the rationalists, correct? Yes. But you, but you do not provide these articles for the jury, do you? Mm, no. You have no work to show, to show the jury, do you? Uh, no. Um, you also never went to college, correct? I did. Is it your testimony today that you went to college? No. Um, uh, your Honor, I believe my witness means uh, you, you yes. You may, may rehabilitate the witness. I'll give you an opportunity. But if that's her testimony right now, you may have an opportunity to uh, rehabilitate her before I try to qualify her. I, I know there is some issue about attending and graduating, things like that, but uh, uh, you may address that later. It's not, it's not an objection to what she says. It is merely you may rehabilitate her later. So Mr. Macis, you may continue. You never worked for Lush, did you? No. Um, and you never received any specialized training? No. Um, and you did not review the internal studies of Lush Fertilizer or any fertilizer company, did you? No. Your Honor, I object to the witness being tenored as a expert in agritech because they have not shown knowledge. They're not providing the jury with anything that would um, that would anything that would give credit to this knowledge. Um, neither skill, experience, training, or education, because they are not specialized and they have not received any education or training. And Ms. Lane, do you, uh, as I indicated, I'll give you an opportunity on that issue to rehabilitate the witness regarding college, if you wish. Um. The witness, Skylar Weirs, did attend college, though did not graduate. You need to ask her questions. Oh, sorry. Um, Ms. Weirs, uh, could you tell me about your college experience? Um, I did attend college. However, I did not graduate. Thank you. Um, your Honor, according to the pretrial rule and ruling and rule 702, Skylar Weirs is more than qualified to be an expert witness in this trial today as her knowledge, skill, and experience have been shown. All right, the pretrial uh, ruling uh, merely uh, gave her the opportunity to qualify. I have to qualify her. Uh, given that, uh, I am going to qualify this witness in the area of modern agri agrotech or agricultural technology. Uh, she doesn't have uh, a college degree. Uh, her uh, investigation is a sufficient experience that she's had in that area. The jury will have to decide what weight to give that, however, but it is not a matter of her qualification. It is a matter of the weight of the testimony by the jury. So she, I will allow her to testify regardless of the minimal amount of, uh, of uh, experience that she has. She still has it. So she is qualified to testify. And uh, Ms. Lane, you may move forward. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Skylar, could you please tell the court what Rationalist Magazine is? 
Yes. So Rationalist Magazine is a quarterly science advocacy mag magazine. It's published by a nonprofit organization whose goal is to reduce the amount of pseudoscience in the media. And do you have any hobbies outside of work or regular weekend plans? Well, I love to write. It's my passion. So I do kind of consider that a hobby, but I will admit, I do like to gamble. Uh, does your family support your gambling career? Uh, no, they do not. They, my father and Dakota do not like that I gamble. If your father and your sister do not support you in your gambling career, what is your reason for pursuing it? Well, being a journalist is not the highest paying job on the market uh, out there. So I do need... Um, more sources where I can get more money from to pay bills. Um, thank you. What, do you know what your sister attributes to her sickness? Uh, yes, she attributes Drufo. And you say you wrote about Drufo? Yes, I did. Uh, was the writing of this article out of the ordinary for you? Um, no, I write anything I can get my hands on. So it was not out of the ordinary. What genre do you spe specifically write about? Music, science, math, culture? Well, I don't have a specific subject I love to write on. Um, but I do uh, like to write in modern architect and GMOs. Uh, have you ever been ridiculed for what you write? Yes. At what time did you write the Drufo article? Uh, I wrote it many years ago. I am not sure the exact date, but I'm sure it's online in the uh, Rationalist magazine. Do you know if this was before or after Dakota's diagnosis? It was before. So what could be dangerous about Drufo in your professional opinion? In my professional opinion, Drufo is not really dangerous. It does contain carcinogens, but it is not, it does not, it's, it's not a lot basically. And compared to other fertilizers on the market, it's less dangerous than those. Less dangerous than other fertilizers on the market? Yes. Fascinating. Thank you, Skylar. And thank you, Your Honor. No further questions. Mr. Maestas, cross-exam. Hello, Ms. Spears. Um, you claim that Lush is the victim of a financial hit job, correct? Uh, can you repeat that? Sorry, I could not hear. Uh, sorry. You claim that Lush is the victim of a, of a financial hit job, correct? Uh, that, no. Um, you wrote a state you wrote a statement before um this correct uh yeah all right i'm trying to find um i'm sorry uh I am mr currently... maestas could you repeat the question yeah you wrote a statement before you came to testify today correct no the one before that please i'm asking about um she said that she wrote a in your statement, is it true that you wrote that Lush is the victim of a financial hit job? Or I don't know if that's an, a, direct, a direct quote, but about that idea. A financial what? That they're being attacked by other agricultural tech companies. A financial hit job. Oh. Okay, yeah. so we've got, we've got the question. The answer was that she did not think she did. Uh, and we're now back to Mr. Macy's. Okay. You wrote a statement before today's court case, correct? Yes. Um, this court, um, this statement was correct. I mean, was complete. Sorry, can you repeat that question? This statement was complete, correct? Uh, yes. And we can agree that you made it truthfully to the best of your knowledge. Uh, yes. And you signed it, correct? Yes. All right. Do you have the statement in front of you? Uh, yeah. 
Okay, could you please read lines 26 to 28? Do you wish the witness uh, to read it out loud or just to read it to herself? Um, I will read it out loud and can you please read along silently? Yeah. All right. And you're, you're reading it, uh, Ms. Weirs, and Mr. Maestas is going to read it out loud. This is mostly driven by the so-called old guard of the agritech sector, which is, sending, which is spending billions of dollars to destroy the reputation of Lush Fertilizer because Lush's Pantaton breakthrough, Drufo, threatens to upend their entire business. Does this testimony show um, that you believe other agritech companies were um, are attempting to destroy um, Lush Fertilizer? Uh, I'm trying to save time. Can you repeat that question? Or can you rephrase it? Sorry, I didn't quite understand that. Based off of what I just read, in your testimony, you say that the old guard is trying to destroy Lush Fertilizer. Uh, yes. However, it was your testimony a few questions ago where you said that um, Lush was not being attacked by other agritech companies. Uh, well, yeah. Your Honor, I impeached the witness. She contradicted herself. No. Well, it, it's up to the jury to decide whether there is impeachment. Let's move forward. You've right. laid you've laid the proper foundation for it. Uh, the jury will decide whether it's accomplished. Let's move on. For the purpose of time for my co-counsel, I'm going to end the questioning there. Thank you, Your Honor. And uh, Ms. Lane, any redirect? Um. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Ms. Weirs, have you ever worked for Lush Fertilizer? No. Do you believe that what's going on inside their company affects you or your sister? Uh, financially, yes. that is. Well, financially, no. Thank you, Your Honor. No further questions. Thank you. And uh, Ms. Weirs, that concludes your testimony. You are excused. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll now have the uh, final or the third witness, I shouldn't say final, I'm not calling the witnesses here. Uh, the third witness for the defendant, uh, I believe that will be Dr. Williams. And Ms. Doyle, you are taking uh, direct on Dr. Williams, is that correct? That is correct. Okay, give me a minute here. And, and I, I, uh, uh, oh, here we go. Uh, Dr. Williams, um, Mr. Wilson, you'll be doing the cross-exam uh, on Dr. Williams, correct? That is correct, Your Honor. Okay, give me a minute to get my witness list up, or my uh, scoring list up here. And Dr. Williams, there we go. Um, okay, and... Um, Ms. Doyle, you may call your witness. Uh, we call Dr. Devin Williams to the stand. And Dr. Williams, you have been sworn. Uh, Ms. Doyle, you may proceed. Uh, good afternoon, Dr. Williams. Please state your name and spell your last for the record. Dr. Devin Williams, W-I-L-L-I-A-M-S. Hello, Dr. Williams. Why don't we start with you giving us a little bit of information about your profession? I am knowledgeable in pharmatoxicology and how biological systems respond to environmental interventions. Oh, what's your educational background in this subject? I have an undergrad through PhD at Colorado State University. My master's was in forensic toxicology, and post-PhD, I did a specialized pharmatoxicology program at the University of Utah. And what is forensic toxicology? Forensic toxicology is the analysis of biological sam sample for the presence of toxins, including drugs. And first, if you could talk about your role in Lush and why you brought onto their research team. I was brought on as a lab technician to increase testing timeliness. Later, I was promoted to oversee labs and mostly work on environmental impacts. And could you tell us a little bit more about your work with Lush? 
I have worked with Lush for over a decade. I was in their toxicology department for seven years. Um, like I stated earlier, I now mostly work on environmental impacts. Uh, Your Honor, based on the witness's extensive knowledge of biology and forensic and pharmacology and extensive work in Lush Labs, we moved to enter the witness as an expert in biology, forensic and pharmacology and an expert in the negative effects of DRUFO pursuant to Rule 702. And uh, Mr. Wilson, in any of those areas uh, uh, regarding um, pharmacology, pharmacological, I, I've got to get a better word than that. I'll just call it pharmacology. Um, and what was the other area? Uh, biology and forensic toxicology. Biology, okay. Uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm not going to qualify anybody in forensic toxicology because that just means litigation. I so uh, I don't think there is such an area, but uh, uh, litigation about uh, pharmacological toxicology is why we're here and biology. So in those two areas, any uh, objection to that, Mr. Wilson? So I'm so sorry to interrupt. I do also want to enter her as an expert in the negative effects of Drufo. Uh, so pharmacological toxicology, including DRUFO, correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, and Mr. Wilson, any objection in those areas? I don't believe Mr. Uh, Dr. Williams has shown her expertise in the negative effects of DRUFO. Well, as, as to research, I'm not going to say it's just the negative effects. Um, I, I won't qualify her just in that area, just on her research in DRUFO as a subset of pharmacological toxicology, that DRUFO is a, um, a toxin and it is also a um, chemical or a, a drug or a chemical, which would be a pharmacological toxicology. So, uh, Mr. There we go. Mr. Wilson, um, does that clarify as far as what I'm asking you about? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Any objection? No. Okay. Uh, I will qualify the witnesses I have said, pharmacological toxicology, uh, including the chemical DRUFO or the uh, pesticide DRUFO and biology. So Ms. Doyle, you may continue. Thank you. Uh, and, could you hey, hey, I'm going to, uh, uh, before we continue here, give me just a moment. Um, we've had some... Uh, could I get a, a quick time here on both direct and cross for this witness from the timekeepers? Uh, looks like six and a half minutes on direct, if I'm reading that correctly. Is that six minutes, five seconds, or six and a half minutes? Uh, 6.50, okay. Uh, 6.50 and uh, 4.10 on cross. Um, um, we've had some problems admitting exhibits here. We've had some significant delays. Um, I will ask you, Ms. Doyle, is six minutes, 50 seconds enough for you? I'm willing to add another minute and a half. Um, could we just... I would love to have the add another minute. All right, I'm going to add a minute and a half to both uh, direct and cross here. Um, I believe there's been that much time that we've been waiting for, and it's not being critical of the timekeepers. It's just we've had some technical issues here. So if I could add a minute and a half to that 650 and a minute and a half to the 410. Okay, everybody says that's good. So it'd be essentially uh, a minute and a half. There would be 758, eight minutes and 20 seconds. Eight minutes and 20 seconds for the um, direct and five, 10, five, five minutes and 40 seconds on the cross. So 820 and 540. Okay. Timekeepers are all ready. Uh, if I could just get an okay from the timekeepers. We're ready, Your Honor. Good enough. Uh, Ms. Doyle, you may Thank proceed. You. Thank you. 
Uh, Miss Dr. Williams, could you please talk about the product of Drufo as a fertilizer? Um, yeah, so fertilizers increase the plant growth using two different ways. The first one is by adding nutrients to the soil, and the second one is by modifying water rotation and aeration. Drufo is a really cool fertilizer in that it uses both methods to greatly increase the fertilizer standards. And Dr. Williams, is Drufo banned in the EU? Yes, it is. And could you tell us why this ban happened to Drufo? Um, Drufo is banned like all other fertilizers that contain nitrogen in the EU out of um, the EU being overly cautious. And was this ban over any cancer concern? No, it was not. It was over one simple fact. Drufo contains nitrogen. So why did Lush decide not to fight the EU ban? Well, I mean, imagine a small startup company going against a global organization. Um, we didn't think that would end well, so Lush decided that it was best to manufacture a product for inside the EU and then a product for outside the EU. And with that said, does Lush have any intentions of gaining EU approval of Drufo in the future? Well, actually, my lab just conducted a, sh a study showing that Drufo leads to reduced eutrophication. We're hoping to submit this data to the EU and hopes for reconsideration of uh, Lush's fertilizer. Wow. Are you aware of a study done by Dr. Casey Rogers? Yes, I am. And could you tell us what that study is about? Dr. Rogers looks for exposure of Drufo being Your Honor, linked. Relevance? And uh, Ms. Doyle, the relevance of that area? Um, I'm simply asking Dr. Williams to speak on what she has heard earlier in this uh, case and as it pertains to the product of Drufo. And Mr. Wilson? Um, Casey Rogers' um, study is a completely, Casey Rogers is a completely different researcher on this topic and is not relevant to Dr. Williams. Well, it's the same subject matter, but different, certainly different uh, uh, parameters of the study, but uh, I'll allow it uh, overruled. Uh, Ms. Doyle, if you'd re-ask the question. Yes, thank you. Are you, uh, could you tell us what the study done by Dr. Rogers is about? Yeah, so Dr. Rogers looks at exposure for Drufo to a link of cancer. Dr. Rogers compares three different groups, farm laborers versus casual gardeners versus people who do neither of those things. And do you agree with Dr. Rogers' study? I do not at all. And what is the reasoning behind this disagreement? Dr. Rogers looks at loosely controlled groups, not taking into any pre-existing health um, issues, you know, that can increase cancer risks, such as smoking, vaping, drinking, um, and genetics. Dr. O Dr. Rogers also doesn't mention the different environments farm laborers versus casual gardeners are going to be in. You know, farm laborers are going to be exposed to a variety of products that they have to use. Um, so is casual gardeners. And if you were in Dr. Rogers' place conducting this study, what would you have done? I would have set up one group who would use Drufo and another group who would use a different type of fertilizer. They... Personal beliefs are not fact. I'm sorry? Personal beliefs are not fact. Hmm. Uh, Ms. Doyle. Uh, I believe the witness has been entered as an expert in Drufo. And, and oh. I'm simply asking her <laughs> to explain um, what she would have done in the place of Dr. Rogers, whose study pertains to Drufo. Uh, I'm going to overrule the objection. Uh, this is an expert witness testifying as to the validity of the opposing expert study. So uh, if it is the, uh, the conclusion that she objects to, or if it is the methodology, which is what we're just hearing about. So I'll allow her to testify as to either, you may proceed. Thank you. Uh, would you like me to restate the question? Yes, please. In doc if you were in Dr. Rogers' place, what would you have done in his study instead? I would have set up two groups who would be in the same environment with the same level of exposure. One group would use Drufo and another group would use another type of fertilizer. Do you have any other issues with Dr. Rogers' study? Yes, I do. Um, Dr. Rogers' study has not been peer-reviewed or replicated, and the results came up inconclusive. 
Um, this is a huge issue because we can't make a claim without having any people, you know, review it and make sure that this claim is actually correct. Thank you. Moving on to a different topic, do you have, would you consider yourself to have any financial bias in this case? I wouldn't say I have financial bias. But um, are you getting paid to be, to be here? Um, yes, I'm getting paid here because this is my job. And is this pay affected by the outcome of this case? No, um, no matter which way this case goes, I will still be paid. And will you still keep your job at Lush after this case, no matter which way the jury rules? Um, yes, I will still have my job at Lush. And is there, in your opinion, is there any way that Drufo could have caused Dakota Weir's terrible non-Hodgkin's lymphoma? In my opinion, that there, there is no way that Drufo could have caused non-Hodgkin's lymphoma in Dakota Weir's. Thank you, Your Honor. No further questions. Uh, Mr. Wilson, cross-exam. Good afternoon, Dr. Williams. My name is Haven Wilson. I will be asking you a few questions today. You are a research toxicologist for Lush Fertilizer, correct? Yes, I am. And is it right that you have led the toxicology lab for seven years, correct? Uh, yes. So you must understand how the human body reacts to toxins? Mm-hmm, yes. And you know how to test for toxicity in chemicals? Yes. And you see yourself as having a responsibility to look past current project objectives and ask the big questions, correct? Yes. You also led the ethics committee for Lush Fertilizer? Yes. So you understand the value of integrity? I do. Um, so you would never lie about test results? I would never lie about test results. You were first employed at Lush as a technician, correct? Yes, I was. So you understand the value of integrity? I do. So you would... Objection, Your Honor. Uh, the objection is... Relevance. Uh, Mr. Wilson? Um, Dr. Williams previously stated she was on the ethics committee. I was just simply confirming her ethics as it's relevant to this case. Um, Ms. Doyle? Please, I don't understand how the witness's integrity has anything to do with this case or uh, cold hard numbers, facts. Well, uh, I'm going to uh, overrule the objection uh, simply because credibility of a witness is always at issue, uh, regardless of who the witness is, and that um, uh, inquiring into, I I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm on uh, cross here. I'm sorry. I'm on cross. Um, I'm going to uh, sustain the objection. Okay. No, that, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, Mr. Wilson is going to, into the issue of credibility. I'm going to overrule the objection. Sorry, I just got lost there in the woods. Your this Honor, was may, your, may this I have was a your question, Mr. Wilson, correct? May I have a, an additional one minute due to that objection? Um, well, uh, the time doesn't run during these objections, correct? Oh, um, yes, we paused the objection, so there's no time needed. Uh, time, time is not running. I, it's my fault, though. I just got confused, and that's the problem of not having this, uh, having this virtually. Sometimes the judge gets confused, or I get confused when I'm on the screen here about where we are on cross or on uh, direct and who's up. Mr. Wilson is crossing here um, the uh, witness of the defendant. And the issue is um, he's going into issues of credibility of this witness and uh, talking about her ethics and what her background in ethics is and uh, talked about whether she would lie on a report. All of that goes to the credibility of the witness, which oh. is fair game. May I so, move on, Your Honor? I'm sorry. May I move on, Your, your Honor? Uh, yes, you may. Yep. Actually, may I consult my co-counsel for one second? Yes, you may. And in the meantime, the objection is overruled. Uh, Mr. Wilson will be able to go forward with this line of testimony. Okay, so time, time starts again. 
<laughs> Dr. Williams, in your statement, you say that you have no, well, previously you testified that you have no financial bias, correct? Well, I would say I don't have a large financial bias. Okay. So you were in charge of the labs, is that correct? Uh, yes, I oversee labs and mostly work on environmental impacts, like I said. And um, when you joined Lush, half of the development team had left the company, correct? Um, yes, they decided to move on to other projects. And that rapid turnover had caused some projects to be rushed to completion? completion? I wouldn't say that had rushed any of the completion. Um, I would say that it just had um, little employees more employees moving in and out. We don't have. All right. So, um, would you say that there was a higher chance for mistakes in here? I, I don't think that there would be a higher chance for mistakes because you know, luckily we have technology now, so it didn't matter who was doing the experiment as long as they were putting down the data. Um. Let's see. So there, all your toxicology tests were performed in-house? Yes. And your toxicology tests did not reveal a cancer risk for Drufo? Yes, we had no cancer risk. Which is what you wanted to find? Um, we, that is outside of my witness statement. Would you like me to answer? Hmm? That is outside of my witness statement. Would you like me to answer? Um, sure. We weren't we weren't looking specifically for cancer. We were looking for toxins that could harm someone. Yeah. Um, does Drufo contain nit nitrates? It does, but it contains a very small dot. Yes and no, please. Yes, it does. Um, Drufo is banned in the EU, correct? Yes. And you believe that this is because of nitrate accumulation? Um, yes, that is what the EU told us. And if the US court found Drufo causes cancer, there would be no chance to ever sell it in the EU. Is that correct? I'm sorry, could you re restate that question you cut out? If a US court found Drufo causes cancer, such as this trial, would there be any chance to ever sell it in the EU? Objection. And the objection is? I'm not sure how to uh, state this, but this is outside the witness's scope of knowledge. I but thought there was something in the witness's statement about um, the effect of a uh, negative ruling in a U.S. case. It's out of the witness's scope of knowledge if Drufo causes cancer? No, um, about a potential in another world ruling. Well, that was... Over in Europe. A am I uh, correct that... Well, I, I thought there was something in the witnesses in Dr. Williams' statement to that effect that uh, about... Uh, about uh, the effect of a negative court ruling in the United States on approval of that product in the EU. Am I incorrect? I believe you are correct, Sierra. And Ms. Doyle, am I incorrect? Um, I will withdraw my objection and allow the witness to answer. Thank you. And uh, do you need the uh, question repeated, Dr. Williams? Yes, please. Okay, Mr. Wilson. If a U.S. court found Drufo caused cancer, such as this trial, there would be no chance to ever sell it in the EU. Is this correct? Yes. Yes. And if you win this suit, you plan to appeal the EU's decision to ban Drufo? Um, I don't think it matters if yes. we win. I don't think it matters if we win this suit because my data shows that Drufo leads to reduced eutrophication. Okay. Your Honor, could the attorney please allow my witness yeah, to answer? And have you finished, Dr. Williams? Um, no, I've not. Sorry, I was cut off. Okay, go ahead and finish your answer. Um, even if, no matter the way this suit turns out, my data shows that Drufa leads to reduced eutrophication, so we will be submitting that data to the EU in hopes to over, overturn the ban. Okay. Um, so if you win this suit, you would appeal the EU's decision to ban Drufo, as I've previously stated? Uh, yes. So then you could sell Drufo in the EU? Um, yes. 
Um, I imagine that would result in a lot of money for Lush, correct? Well, I'm not, that's out of my scope. I'm not exactly sure um, the financials with that. So you would do anything to keep this lawsuit from going badly? Um, like I've previously stated, it does not matter where this lawsuit goes. I will still have my job at Lush and I will still be submitting that data. Moving on, have you published your own study on Drufo? I have not. You have not? Um, where did you get your information then? Well, I work at Lush. I've been creating Drufo, so I wouldn't exactly publish my own study with outside, of the com outside of the company. Your Honor, we strike to remove the witness for lack of qualification. Uh, I've already qualified the witness, uh, uh, denied. Oh. Moving on. Are you aware of a peer reviewed study in the EU that showed increased cancer risk with exposure to Drupal? Um, I'm not aware. So you, let me get this straight. You didn't fully research the risks that were involved with the use of Drupal? Um, I, I created Drufo with Lush, so I'm not sure why I'd be unaware of the risks, risks sorry. Um, so I wouldn't, I, I don't exactly do outside research when I'm the one who created it. So even you, even though you were aware of the fact that Drufo causes cancer, you still decided to put it on the market? I have not said I'm aware that Drufo causes cancer. And I... What a dangerous. No, hang, hang on, hang on, Mr. Wilson. Please finish your answer, doctor. Thank you. I do not think that Drufo has caused cancer, so I would say that I would not have put out Drufo if it caused cancer. But if Drufo, if Drufo was known to be a carcinogen, you would have you would agree that there should be an appropriate warning on the label, correct? Drufo has such a little amount of carcinogen that it really doesn't harm anyone. And there are proper labels, as we've seen exhibit one has been entered before. So as an academic, you know the importance of being peer reviewed, correct? Yes, I do. You were critical of Dr. Rogers' study because it has not been peer reviewed? Yes, I has find that. Has your study on the risks of Drufo been published, Dr. Williams? Um, I'm sorry, could you repeat that question? Has your study on the risks of Drufo been published? I'm so sorry, you keep cutting out, like in the middle of your sentence. Has your study on the risks of Drufo been published? Um, no, it's not because my study has not been concluded yet. So it couldn't have been peer reviewed at all? Well, it can't be peer reviewed because it hasn't been concluded yet. So you're telling me that you do not know the validity of your testing methods? I'm saying that I can't, I'm sorry, can you rephrase that? You do not know the validity of your testing methods due to the, due to the fact that it can be peer reviewed, correct? Well, I'm saying that it has shown that it has reduced eutrophication. Um, like I've stated earlier, like it's not, it's not peer reviewed because the study is not complete. But when it, once it is complete, we will have other scientists come in and, and peer review it. No further questions, Your Honor. Thank you. And, Your uh, Honor, that's time. Uh, yes, thank you. And uh, Ms. Doyle, uh, redirect. Yes, Your Honor. Um, Dr. Williams, uh, could you tell us how did you work with anyone else while at Lush? Um, yes, you know, I worked with a lot of other scientists at Lush. And did you, and how is this similar to peer review at all? Well, if we have, if all of these scientists are collaborating, you know, we have a bunch of people working together. And so, yes, we will have it peer reviewed again, but I would say that it's, you know, pretty much fully correct because we've had other people look at it during the process. And um, concerning financial bias, could you state again, just based on the way this case goes, um, if you'll be affected at all? I will not be affected at all. I will still have my job and I will still um, have the resources to continue my experiments and studies. Thank you, Your Honor, no further questions. Uh, thank you. And uh, there is uh, no time for recross. So that concludes the evidence in the case. <clears throat> uh,
Um, are there, let, let me take a quick look here. I'm sorry, before I say that, Ms. Uh, Ms. Doyle, any additional witnesses? I guess we don't have any time for it, so there is no additional witness, even if there were one. Uh, so the evidence is concluded. Uh, give me just a moment. Uh, we'll have closing argument in just a moment. And uh, uh, we'll have closing argument for the plaintiff from Mr. Maestas. And you may proceed. Just to clarify, I do get a rebuttal um, with any excess time, correct? Any extra time, you automatically get rebuttal unless you'd like to uh, designate it so that you get a signal from the timekeeper. That's the only reason to designate. Thank you. Otherwise, you, whatever's left, you can have. Your Honor, may it please the court, jury, and opposing counsel. Lush was rush. Today, we have heard the story of a woman whose life has been taken away because she used a product called Drufo, which gave her non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and was produced by Lush Fertilizer. We have also heard from the CEO of Lush Fertilizer, Blake Doncourt, and she has told you that there were concerns of a carcinogen within the product as their name was on the email voicing such concerns. We heard that Lush Fertilizer could have prevented any risk of cancer by baking its product. But we also heard that Lush was going to save millions of dollars by not baking this product. Lush had invest investor funding that demanded profitability and they rushed their product onto the market to fit this profitability without taking the proper precautions to ensure that it was safe. Today, we have also heard from the sibling of Dakota Wears, Skylar Wears. And she has told you that they are an expert on modern agritech. However, this is whilst simultaneously never having attended college nor worked for an agritech company. The only difference is a collection of articles. Wait, the only experience is a collection of articles in a magazine that they in a, the only you're sorry, Your Honor. The only their only experience is a collection of articles which they never name, are not reviewed, and the source of these articles are ambiguous at best. Furthermore, they contradicted themselves when talking about the agritech industry's competitive nature and are effectively impeached. Jury, please don't ascribe much importance to anything that she said for these reasons. Finally, we heard from Dr. Devin Williams. This witness has told you that, that, that they are not a part of the original testing team, but also claimed during um, cross-examination to have created Drufo, which is impossible if they are not a part of the original development team. And this is because they were rushed into a promotion because all of that original testing team had most of it had left by the time they were promoted. This witness wants you to believe that their expert testimony is valid, but they have never published their own study saying Drufo has zero correlation to cancer and does not mention the studies done in 2003. This witness rushed by their employer cannot provide you with any studies to, to support their testimony. Lush was rushed. You've also heard from our own witnesses. Ms. Dakota Weirs has explained how using Lush fertilizer for her job at Haven Landscaping caused her to develop non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. They have explained that this outcome has made it harder to play piano, a love of hers, and ended the habit of positive community service. Carson Durst described the research that she did after her promotion in which she raised concerns over possible carcinogenic effects of Druvo to a higher up in the company. Furthermore, she described how the management at Lush ignored these concerns and kept this known dangerous product on the market. Finally, Dr. Rogers described how she analyzed Drufo's chemical makeup and through their own study, concluded that Drufo does increase the chance of developing non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Dr. Rogers told you, members of the jury, that, Rush, that Lush rushed its product to market without sufficient studies on its safety. You have heard that the burden of proving by a preponderance of the evidence, wait, we have the burden of proving by a preponderance of the evidence or that it is more likely than not that Lush is negligent in today's case. These facts clearly show that to be true. One, Drufo is within Lush fertilizer. Two, there is a risk because Lush knew of potential carcinogenic effects, never warned consumers of these risks, and did not include guidelines warning of a cancer risk. Three, Ms. Wares was expected to use Lush fertilizer as an employee of Haven Landscaping. And four, that, Mr. that Ms. Wares had damages that were caused by the defendant's negligence while the product was being used in a manner that defendant should reasonably have expected. From this evidence, it is clear that Lush Fertilizer is to blame for Dakota's tragic illness. We ask that you allow Ms. Wares to repair her, to repair her broken life by siding with her in this case by agreeing that Lush was rushed. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Any additional time remaining is reserved for rebuttal. 
And Ms. Doyle, uh, closing argument for the defendant. Yes. Your Honor, if it pleases the court, my co-counsel and I presented three witnesses today that testified about the defendant Lush's extensive research on the safety of Drufo. The first witness being Dr. Devin Williams, who is the head of Lush's research labs and who has a PhD in pharmatoxicology. Today, she told us that her labs have found no evidence that the product Drufo causes any form of cancer. The, another witness, Ms. Skylar Weirs, who has done extensive research on Drufo, testified that Drufo does not contain any carcinogenic ingredients, and that in all her years of research, she has never come upon any credible study that links Drufo to non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, much less any other cancer. Finally, we heard from the CEO of Lush, Blake Doncourt. Ms. Doncourt testified to the fact that she was never aware of any reasonable risk that could be caused using Drufo. I would like to remind the court that the plaintiff has the burden of proof. You have heard from their three witnesses that testified. One is Dakota Weirs, someone who has the curse of cancer and was searching for answers, but her search has been led by tumors, and tumors do not cause rumor. Tum I'm so sorry. Rumors do not cause tumors. Another plaintiff witness you have heard from is Carson Durst, a friend of Blake's son, whose position at Lust was terminated after they proved incompetent at their job. A third plaintiff witness, Dr. Casey Rogers, a doctor of horticulture and entomology with questionable financial biases, who is trying to tell you all about something they have zero education in. The defendant concedes that they are the manufacturer of the product Drupo. However, this product was made to be safe for use and tested thoroughly before being put on the market. Through Dr. Williams' testimony, it has been proven that the defendant exercised reasonable care while manufacturing Drufo. And through the testimony of Ms. Doncourt, the company of Lush did intend for Drufo to be used by the layperson in a gardening setting. Now, I want to express on behalf of the entire defense that we are truly saddened by Ms. Dakota's disease and how it has negatively affected their life. But through the testimony of Skylar Weirs, it was shown that these damages were not and could not have been reasonably caused by Drufo. That being said, let's say in some other world, the defense is found liable of negligence. If that is true, you must see that Dakota Weirs was negligent as well. She did not use the protection suggested when using the fertilizer Drufo, therefore putting themselves at risk. Ladies and gentlemen, Dakota Weirs only began her research because of a news story on television. And let's be clear, rumors do not cause tumors. It is quite easy to believe what one hears on television, but I urge and encourage you all to look at the facts and data before jumping to conclusions, especially when concerning life-threatening topics such as cancerous tumors. The plaintiff has failed to prove beyond a preponderance of evidence that Drufo was manufactured without exercising reasonable care in order to prevent any unreasonable risk and that the defendant did not take into account the plaintiff being one of those people who would reasonably use Drufo. Dakota Weir's cancer, although disheartening, has yet to be proven to be caused by Drufo. Therefore, you must find the defendant not liable for negligence and lack of reasonable care. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, uh, do you wish to have a uh, rebuttal, Mr. Maestas? Yes, very quickly, Your Honor. And, and before you do, uh, could we have a time check just so you know how much time you've got? Uh, Looks like minute three. Go right ahead. Both parties ignored things and so and showed some form, some form of negligence. Dakota with protective clothing, Lush with baking recommendations. The only difference is Lush knew of these cancer risks and Dakota did not. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you very much. Uh, that concludes the case. It stands submitted to the jury. I'm going to ask the uh, scoring panelists to rejoin us with video as soon as they have finished and submitted their findings. Uh, I'm going to do the same right now. Uh, give me just a moment to finalize. Yep. Your Honor, just so you know, I will let you know when I have all of them submitted to. Oh, thank you. Sorry, I and I missed a witness here. Oh, that's this is a real powerful program. It tells you where you screw up. Uh, let's see here. Let me find my mistake. Witness. 
Ah, right. There we go, that ought to do it. Great. Uh, I've submitted mine. It looks as though our panelists have done the same. Uh, they so are all I in. Thank you so much. You can go ahead and give your guys' feedback at this point in time. After you're done giving your feedback, we will go ahead and we're missing one. Okay, we're actually missing one. So hold on just a second. Let me just find out which one it is. All right, technology is a little bit slower than we are sometimes. It is now in. Go ahead and you guys can give your guys feedback. Once you're finished, I will go ahead and end the live stream. Your coaches will get your results after we have everything tabulated, just so you guys know. Go ahead. Okay, and uh, um, I'll hold on here a moment. Um, Heather, I, I will need to uh, talk with you afterwards. So either stay with me or I'll call you on the phone, either one. You can, yes, that probably call me afterwards. That would be easiest for me. Thank you very much. Thank you. You bet. Now, uh, if I could have all of the participants, witnesses and attorneys alike, just activate your screens again, your video, uh, so that uh, as we talk with you, um, we know who's there. Pretty much everyone, I've got uh, uh, Team B timekeepers still ought to come on. Ms. Goodwin and Ms. Watson, if you're still there. Hopefully. Or I should say, I am hopeful that they come back on. Hopefully is the wrong word. It's, I am hopeful. Well, we're not seeing them, so. I am hopeful they will join us before we're done. Uh, I would ask uh, each of us uh, may have some comments. Uh, Ms. Van Heusen, there we are. Okay, we're all back now. Ms. Van Heusen, go right ahead. Um, I'll keep this brief for you guys because it is the end of it for you. But um, I was very impressed, first of all, for this being the fourth round, super energy. Everybody was still really into it. That was really good. Um, I want to congratulate everyone in particular who had to deal with a cross-exam issue and admissibility of evidence issue. Those were, there were some real um, discussion today about all that kind of stuff. And you guys all did a great job sticking with your objections, abandoning them when you should, that sort of a thing. So I just really thought the lawyers did well on that piece of it. Um, the witnesses were great. You all had your information down, you were confident in your materials, you really knew what was in and out of your statement. So it was really great, you guys. Excellent work. Thank you so much. And Mr. Pereira. Thank you, Judge. Um, yes, I echo what um, Sarah was just saying about good job getting through this. It's, a, it's been a long uh, day and a couple days for you guys. Um, so congratulations on getting through it. Um, Really good job, really good job being prepared. I particularly liked both doctors on each side. Um, they definitely knew those witness statements. There's a lot of scientific stuff in there. <laughs> um, so it was really good job knowing that. Um, really good job responding to objections. Um, and as a habit, whenever I hear an objection, I, I think about how I would respond to that and um, some of the responses were very similar to what I would do. So that that's impressive, that's very well done. So um, good job as far as for Dakota Weir being kind of a sympathetic plaintiff as um, because this person has cancer. So it's, it's being soft-spoken and things like that goes well with it. Um, and I think impeachment is hard um, and I think both sides got an opportunity to try and practice that too, so. Um, I think that's my feedback. Great. Uh, how many uh, seniors do we have? No seniors. Wow. Juniors? Just a 
couple of juniors. Uh, the rest of you are freshmen and sophomores. Wow. Well, I'm that's I was going to say how impressed I was. Now I'm really impressed. Uh, I think both of your teams, um, uh, you've got a you've got a puncher's chance, either one of you, and maybe more than a puncher's chance of advancing here. You're both very, very good. Uh, I've had you each uh, twice in uh, these four rounds. So I've, I've got a good flavor of uh, how well you can do in uh, different circumstances. Uh, you know, same, same facts and all, but each trial is different. You never know what's gonna happen. Uh, a couple of things now that we're at the, at the end of competition, I think these are fair comments because they apply to everyone or to, to both teams. One thing is, uh, uh, you know, you, um, no one expects you to memorize everything and you, everyone has a list, uh, for instance, on uh, direct or in cross, you, uh, my practice when I was 26 years, I was a trial attorney, you have a list of kind of questions that you ask. Now you may ask them a little differently each time, but they're more bullet points than, you know, uh, a script, but you have those bullet points. Now, next to the ones where you know there's going to be a problem. You know there could be a challenge to what you're going to do, whether it's uh, uh, from opposing counsel or whether it's on cross from a witness who doesn't remember something. And you either have to refresh their recollection if it's on direct or you have to impeach them because you're on cross. If you have to do that, Write in your bullet points, you know, write on the questions you're asking, write right there. Witness statement line 12 or whatever it is so that you can immediately refer, you know, if the witness is, oh, I don't remember. You say, well, didn't you do it? Didn't you uh, have a uh, witness? Didn't you do a witness statement? Yes, I did. It was at the, uh, did you swear it's the truth? Yep, I did. Well, would you look at uh, line 12 uh, or page six, line 12? right there have it right on your list so you don't have to look anywhere else you don't have to ask anybody else have it right there that puts the uh burden on your witness uh, and uh if it's if it's your witness if you're on direct you want to have that statement right there in front of that witness so that uh, he or she can refer directly to it immediately no delays if it's cross you're dealing with an adverse witness and if the adverse witness doesn't have it there, well, they look silly because they, they, oh, I don't remember or whatever. Well, would you like me to read it to you? And then you can do that because you've got it right there in front of you. And it, it means that you're organized as the attorney and maybe the witness isn't uh, if it's uh, an adverse witness. If it's your witness, make sure your witness has that in front of them so that uh, you can have them refer to it up. Oh, yep. I refresh my recollection. I just read that and then testify as you wish they will. So that's just something to keep things moving along and make yourself look organized as an attorney. The other issue was on both sides again, just because the judge asks you a question on an objection, don't cave in on that objection necessarily, uh, unless it will really hurt you uh, an adverse ruling on that will really hurt you. You may, uh, in fact, I, I just counted four times when I asked when I was going to probably grant the objection for the objecting attorney, but the attorney gave up on it and just said, uh, I'll withdraw that objection. Well, don't always do that. If you think you're right, maybe you just roll the dice with the judge and let the judge rule on it. Because uh, I, you know, you can just say, no, judge, I stand on my objection, uh, even if you don't have anything more to say about it. If the judge says, you know, well, uh, how do you respond to that? And rather than giving up on it, you may want to stand on it and move forward. So um, that just makes you look, you know, have the courage of your convictions sometimes in front of the jury. Even if you might lose it, the jury might be impressed by that, that you've stood your ground on it. Uh, other than that, uh, those are just general comments, but I think either one of you have, either one or both of you have a chance of moving on here. So, and uh, uh, excellent performances by everybody. So thank you very much. It was, I, I really enjoy doing this. And if any of you have any questions for me uh, or for our panelists, uh, unmute and ask me. <laughs> or if not, we'll see you later.
Well, I don't see anybody uh, ask any questions. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. You bet. Finally done. Thank you.